Hi, and welcome to episode three of the Graveyard Media Podcast for the week of July 3rd, 2017. Um, I'm your host, Sane. With me is co-host Dawson. That's me. And co-host Thel. America. America. So, uh, America. July 4th is tomorrow. Shout out Damn to America. Right. Shout out to America. Happy 2017th <laughs> birthday. Happy 2017th birthday, America. I'll drink to that. Need some fucking coffee because Zane said I couldn't drink on uh, the show. What? what? I don't remember saying you couldn't drink anything. Oh, yeah, right. No, that joke doesn't work because Dawson's actively drinking a beer right now. <laughs> Fuck. Okay, okay, so the truth is I don't have a beer to drink. I, you caught me, everyone. Shit. Darn, I was going to make a funny joke, but everyone fucked me up by proving me wrong with that. And do Kahlua and cream. Okay, I so... Still. I don't know, the joke wasn't that funny. It would, it would have been kind of funny. So we're going to start out by talking about movies we've seen and games we've played this week, uh, then move into the movie news and end with gaming news. Sound good? Sounds good Sounds to me. Sounds good to me, my man. <laughs> okay, so who wants to start this week? Fuck, here we go, getting the round robin. Uh, shit, should I start? I don't got much. Uh, do you want to start with movies or games? Uh, I'm gonna start with games, cause like, aside from like the last, the fucking same games that I've been just goddamn playing, um, uh, I have tried out, I've done a little bit of trying out Planet Coaster, and, uh, I like it, it's some good stuff, it's, uh, it's got a lot of, a lot of customization, you can make your own, like, buildings entirely how you want them. You can straight up make, like, a building that's, like, a haunted house from fucking stra- scratch. You build the walls to pass and all that stuff and just put, like, a thing saying, like, this is an attraction. You can go there. Uh, the coaster making mechanics are really fun to play around with. Uh, like, I last night I made a fucking roller coaster that was literally just you get stuck in traffic and people were really excited to ride on it. It was <laughs> great. Um, yeah, I've been about that. Yeah. Traffic. I mean, it's, it's Roller Coaster Tycoon, but updated for more fun. That's about all I can say about Updated it. Updated for more fun. Is it still yeah. in early access? No, it's been out of early access for a little while now. Okay. Yeah, I heard about that when it... At least I think it came out in early access, but that, that was kind of a while ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it definitely that. did It definitely did come out in early access. Um, it came out really early in early access. Um, but, yeah. Still yeah. well, that's cool. lots of stuff since then. But, yeah. So thoughts that's all of it overall? Do you like it or... Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I would recommend it to anyone who likes Roller Coaster Tycoon. And it has the fucking challenge mode, which is just like, uh, you, you're given like an entrance and a spe- certain amount of money, <laughs> and you gotta research shit. And that was like my favorite shit. That is my shit. And that like, was really hard to do in Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 because you had to make your own challenge mode and fucking select all that shit by hand, and it was the worst. Um, but in this game, it just does it for you. I love it. So, yeah, play right. that game. Um, uh, stuff that I've been doing, uh, I've actually been watching a lot of TV shows, uh, got through all of Fargo season three, and god damn, that show just never stops delivering. That show's just never stops being good. Fuck, there were yeah, some good episodes in that I show. should, I should get into Fargo, cause I liked, um, uh, I liked Legion, Legion. a lot, yeah. but, <laughs> uh, yeah, I heard nothing about good things from Fargo, so. Yeah, and that's... Fargo was one of those things that sort of came off that weird, there was like this weird period a couple of years ago where it's like, we're just going to make all of these like really famous movies and we're going to take them and we're going to make them into our own TV shows and we're going to do all these guys with like big ideas, this, these rights to these shows and it all turned out really good, fucking Hannibal, Fargo, uh, shit, I'm, I'm forgetting, uh, Bates Motel was apparently actually kind of good and it's like all of this <laughs> stuff. Apparently like, actually kind of good. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, and it's like, you hear all this stuff, oh, they're making a fucking Hannibal television show? Oh, that sounds like it's gonna be garbage. A fucking Fargo television show? The fuck is it gonna be? And it turns out it's some good, good shit. I don't know. It works. Apparently. Yeah, yeah, fuck. Yeah. Um, also, uh, episode eight of Twin Peaks was everything that I wanted out of this new Twin Peaks series. It was forty fucking minutes of David Lynch. Mm. You, you need to be. You have to watch all of the original Twin Peaks to like 
Oh, okay, the fuck, new one? absolutely. Yes. Okay. Um, to like, well, let me put it this way. Um, one of the w things that David Lynch does a lot is that uh, the way I describe it is he creates these large interconnected mechanical worlds that he gives you absolutely no context on. He sort of puts you in there and lets people go about their daily business. They don't, you know, really say anything or like discuss how any of the stuff might be weird to us. He just creates this stuff, lets it run, puts a camera there. Yeah. And that's why everyone's like, yeah, yeah, I don't know what the fuck's going on because you, you don't have the time. Um, in Twin Peaks, a lot of the stuff like is actually explained in, uh, yeah, you, you have to not only watch the Twin Peaks, but you got to watch Fire Walk with me and the uh, deleted scenes for Fire Walk with me for everything to totally meld together. Um, like for the actual plot to be understood. Like, right. this was, like, 40 minutes of basically surrealism, but we could, you know, every, everyone who's watching it who knows basically what's going on in Twin Peaks can gain a general idea of what was happening and what was being shown to us, right? Uh, but yeah, definitely you have to go through all of Twin Peaks, 100%. 100%. It's, it's not, it's, it is very much a season three because it comes off of where season two ended. Right. Okay, well, I might have to catch up on or finish Twin Peaks because I, I kind of petered out somewhere in season two. Yeah. Um, well, but I you know, haven't really seen any of it. Phil tried to get me to watch it. Well, let me explain. While we were playing, while we were playing a game of Civilization Five, mm -hmm. which you double fell is asleep. not not okay. <laughs> <laughs> Civ Five is not exactly a game that requires complete undivided attention, but it requires just enough tension attention that I literally do not remember a thing that happened in Twin Peaks. Well, here's the well, thing, especially like, because I think Twin Peaks takes a lot of concentration to pick up a lot of the nuance yeah, of what's going pay on. A hundred percent attention to Twin Peaks. Yeah. And well, else. and also like there's a bunch of a ton of interconnected plots. Um, well, some of which aren't in interconnected. It's just like. The town moving, basically. Right. Um, uh, yeah, the thing is, Dawson has seen the entire first season of Twin Peaks. I we, remember. We got, he remembers the first episode. <laughs> yeah, I remember there was this locket. Uh-huh. That's the entirety of what I remember about Twin Peaks. Yeah. That's it. All That's all, all I remember. And I'm sure that people who've seen, who like actually paid attention to Twin Peaks know what I'm talking about. But like, I mean, it's I been cannot a while. think of any other show that requires concentration, like enough concentration that a game, a turn-based game where the other person's turn takes a couple of, like a good 10 minutes a piece. Like that that should allow me to concentrate on any tv show anywhere right. but not twin peaks <laughs> well in a, in a way like twin peaks is kind of slow and that it's like slow but all of it matters so you have to like actually be listening and like really understanding what they're saying and yeah to everything yeah. like well at the point where you got to say and take stop. My turn well thing thing is the point where you got to saying a lot of stuff stops mattering for instance, yeah, well. like there are a lot of uh, plot lines that literally go absolutely nowhere and basically make a lot of like the first season completely inconsequential just because it's like, oh, okay, well, if this is where this is going, then I think off. that I stopped right before they start revealing who. Oh, so I don't actually... I don't know who the killer is, so I'm like right kind of okay. the first chunk of this. So you actually got in. So you actually stopped before it started getting really bad. Um, right. The thing is, David Lynch didn't ever want to. Damn it! I was gonna make I was yeah. gonna make a joke about who the, who, who the killer is, but it was gonna be Persona Four it. spoilers. Well, uh -oh. um, so like it's I been wanted out for to make twenty two years. It has been out for twenty two years. I could just could have just said it, but now that I've like said that I was gonna make the joke, I don't want to because it's not gonna be funny. Ah. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler alert, the killer was Dave. It was him. It was you, Dave. You did it. You killed Laura Palmer, you bitch. Fuck you. But yeah, I'm not going get, to get into any Twin Peaks spoilers even, like, uh, so far as the show is concerned, because right. specifically because these two haven't seen it. Right, yeah. I should finish up Twin Peaks. I don't even know if I knew what episode I was on anymore, because, um... 
I think that Dalston overwrote my progress on it, and I don't remember, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that and that was my fault. Sorry about that. Ah, uh, that's cool. Whatever. What do you mean I overwrote your progress? What? Uh, we like, share Netflix um, account. Oh, on the yeah. Netflix. Yeah. Oh shit! Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's yeah, it's yeah. cool. I just I don't remember where I was at. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'd have to like go through the episodes and be like, do I remember this? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Have you watched anything else this week, though? Uh, not really. No. Do you did you want to get into Fargo at all? Uh, hmm. I, I I suppose I could. Um, it's it's. I don't know, shit. I don't actually know where to start. It's just it's just another season of um a character who is much more spunky and doesn't give a fuck about her goddamn superiors more than the other two. Um trying to solve a fucking crazy ass interconnected murder between the fucking feud between uh Obi-Wan Kenobi and Obi-Wan Kenobi. They're fighting against each other. They hate each other because of a stamp. And, and fucking characters from the first... I don't know where the fuck to even, like, how to deal with that shit. It's... It's goddamn great. I I, it's, I, it's, I don't know. I, I legitimately have no idea where to go. Just watch it. So, with Legion, I really liked kind of the style of the show and how they broke out pieces and it was, like, its own thing for a while. <laughs> if oh, that yeah. makes any sense, if you're, if you're getting what I'm yeah. saying. Uh, Does well, Fargo uh, do the same thing, or is it a little bit more like straightforward? Um, Fargo's pretty. Uh, it's, it is a pretty straightforward plot. It um, it does. You know, uh, th- there is one specific episode, the third. It was like the third episode, um, where it just goes on this completely different tangent. That was uh, really funny. Me and the guy I was watching it with, we noticed it was like fucking Leland Palmer shows up, and then Mac from Always Sunny in Philadelphia show up. And it's the oh, it, no. we were just making fucking jokes constantly. Like David Lynch just appears when Liam. I'm going to the Black Lodge. He jumps out of the fucking airplane, and just pulls a parachute, jumps into like a uh, some uh, fucking wires, and just electrocutes himself and dies. Then fucking Charlie from spoilers. Always. Oh uh, yeah, spoilers, spoilers. This happens in Fargo. <laughs> then Charlie from Always Sunny in Philadelphia, playing Charlie from Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Jumps out, uh, says, Mac, we're going to the Black Lodge! Fucking climbs up a, uh, uh t- telephone pole. Jumps onto a, uh, you know. Okay, I, I can't tell if you're right. I, I don't know anything about Fargo. I don't know enough to, to know whether that's a joke or not. Is it actually the characters from Always Sunny in Philadelphia? No, it's not at all. Okay. <laughs> like, I don't know enough about Fargo to know whether they would do that or not. Because I know yeah. some TV shows would, and I know that... The guys from Always Sunny would definitely agree to do it. Yeah, we want you to cameo as your character from Always Sunny. I mean, well, he did well, it in he thing. did it in Pacific Rim. Far- Fargo Fargo does um take itself serious. Fargo does is really really silly at points, but it does take itself seriously to the point where that wouldn't happen. It takes itself seriously enough that they wouldn't get the cast <laughs> of Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah, no, they just get Mac to play Mac. <laughs> <laughs> And like hit on, and like not be gay. The so my like, uh, so like then later what? Yeah, no, you're not gonna. All right, well, uh, fucking see you later then, bitch. Bye. That was the scene. That that actually did happen in Fargo. <laughs> oh, so why don't we move into what I've seen this week then? Yeah, go um, ahead, man. I saw okay, so I saw Baby Driver, and I also yeah. watched season two of Sense Eight. So I'll start with Baby Driver, please. Um. So, the soundtrack was great. I really loved how in sync with the... Like, the editing with the soundtrack was just perfect. To the point where there were often, like, gunshots that were timed to the music. Uh, There were several points in which um, Baby would be like... The main character, Baby, would be like, stop. And he would, like, rewind the track so that it was synced up with what he wanted to do. (laughs) It was... It was kind of weird. (laughs) But the editing was great, and uh, visuals were great. Um, The plot, like, there were points in the plot where I was confused about the logic of the main character, and I can't tell if... So my my knee-jerk reaction is that there were edit- or there were scenes that were left on the the cutting room floor that would have explained the logic 
better of baby, but there were points where it was like I couldn't tell if there were just deleted scenes or if it was like why is this character doing this? Because <laughs> right. I, I don't know, like the maybe it might I don't have know. Just been why? Why is the character doing this? Yeah, it because it, it very much could have been because it seemed very much like maybe the character wasn't planning what he was doing; he was reacting more than thinking. But at the same time, it's like that. I don't understand his train of thought here. <laughs> like, but um. So other than like a little bit of confusion in the middle, I think other than that the plot was was pretty straightforward. Everything was interesting. All the characters were great. Um you could you really like could tell who everyone was pretty quickly in terms of like the kind of person they were. Um uh I don't remember the actors the the lead character's name, but um Kevin Spacey and it was great. What? No, it was never mind. Go on. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd almost rather. I'd almost recommend the soundtrack more than the film. <laughs> the wow. Yeah, no, it's it's good. It I did really like it, but I wouldn't say it's full price for me. I would say it's more of like a matinee because really. Yeah, I I'm that surprises me. A little disappointed in because I thought the plot was really weird in the middle. Yeah. Um. But it was really well edited. There were lots of great chase scenes. Like uh, there were like one of my issues with Drive. Not not to say Drive was a bad movie or anything, but one of the things I would have liked to see more in Drive was more car chases like there were in the first the first section of Drive. Whereas in Baby Driver, it seems like there were, there was like three or four really good chase scenes. So I thought that was really good, but I, I just think that the plot was really weird for me in the middle, and I don't know if I can fully recommend it, but I don't know. Maybe maybe I just would need to rewatch it because I missed something? I don't I don't know. Um, I, I still haven't seen it, so I can't speak to yeah. any of this. Um, uh, but yeah, what I'm, what I'm hearing is, like, this is Edgar Wright's best film, and I mean... This is the guy that did the Cornetto trilogy. This is fucking Shaun of the Dead, goddamn Hot Fuzz, and fucking The World's End. Scott Pilgrim, who a lot of people talk shit about because it's like quintessential fucking hipster movie. I still think yeah. the quintessential fucking hipster movie was a uh, movie I talked about uh, earlier. Um, what what was it? Uh, Twin Peaks. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well, last time, fucking what's his name a asshole who i hate man uh directed a movie with audrey plaza in it and i fucking hated it because it was like very much the like okay 20 something problems i actually hate all these characters whereas scott pilgrim was very colorful and fun and all the characters were good and nice and and it was, well, it was it a was, fun movie to watch it was a graphic novel too so like oh yeah yeah, yeah. and I, everything I, is nowadays Oh yeah, well yeah, and I, um, and I read the graphic novel and it follows it pretty fucking closely, visually. Which is especially. unusual because most mm. comic book movies don't. No, but so I, I guess really I would say like making comic book movies. I guess what I would say about it is if it's like as an action movie, it is a very solid action movie. It is like, yeah. like, and the the cinematography is great. The the editing in particular is really good. Yeah, and again, um, this is coming off of Scott Pilgrim. This is like yeah, so sense. maybe oh, I'm man, being a little cold, like colder on it than I should, but I I don't know. Like I came out of that movie enjoying it, but the next day I was kind of going, like, would I recommend that at full price? I don't know. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I definitely need to see it. I'm actually, I'm also really excited yeah. to see it. Yeah, it. it like I don't wanna I don't wanna scare people away from it because it still yeah. is a really solid movie. Um and maybe it was just but I thought it was good. I liked yeah. it. Um So the other thing I watched this week was the season two of Sense Eight. Uh that Netflix series that came out last year. Um maybe even I don't even remember. Uh I've been waiting a long time for season two. <laughs> yeah. Um, Ooh, I don't know how I feel. It's, so, like, every episode is more than an hour, usually. It's, like, an hour and ten, an hour and fifteen. 
kind of like in that weird place where it can be either like it's almost a full hour walk <laughs> yeah. um, and like uh so it can be a little bit intense to kind of binge but um it's definitely like interesting enough and uh paced in such a way that like it's like kind of hard to stop watching um right right the first season <laughs> Uh, didn't really end on a cliffhanger. It was kind of like it resolved in a, such a way that the next season would like make sense to logically follow it. This one ended on a total cliffhanger, hmm. and it kind yeah, of sucks yeah, yeah. because I know it's going to be another like year before I see more. Yeah. Um, but I thought there was lots of good character development. They uh, focused more on characters that they focused less on in the pre, which I thought was good because you're you're dealing with a cast of like eight people who all have their own relationships and yeah. even though a lot of the characters are coming coming together more and being like together more than they were in the previous season um it's still like a lot of characters to juggle in such a large ensemble cast but i think that um it doesn't leave you feeling as uh be because all of the characters are developed better it doesn't feel leave you feeling the same way Heroes did, where it felt like you would get 10 or 20 minutes out of, like, two or three episodes on the character you cared about. Whereas this yeah. one, all of the characters are interesting enough that even if they're focusing on one of your less favorite ones, it still um, relates enough to the overall plot that it doesn't feel like wasted time a lot of, like a lot of Heroes did. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's really a challenge to juggle such a large ensemble cast, but I think Sense 8 does it really well. Um good. And it's such a weird concept for a season. I, I don't for for those of uh peop, for those of you who haven't heard anything about Sense 8, it's about um eight people who are essentially like um emotionally connected to each other despite being across the world. So mm. they tap into each other's senses, skills, um, abilities, knowledge. Like, suddenly a guy from Germany can speak uh, perfect English, perfect uh, Korean. Like, uh, someone who's, like, a safe cracker um, can suddenly, like, uh, you know, have tactical training with the police academy so he know he can, like, look to see who might be holding a weapon um suddenly gains the abilities of um lying as convincingly as an actor would like uh it's it's really great i i really Sounds enjoy the a little concept bit like a uh, killer seven no i i'm not exactly the, the, the same game? but yeah the video game in in killer seven the video game you were i mean you were a person with multiple personality disorder right uh, sort sort of. of. It wasn't exactly multiple personality disorder. You were literally, you were actually, I think, more like Legion. Uh, you were a bunch of people in the same body. So, okay. but like, yeah. yeah, like each person had their own individual personality and set of skills, but obviously they could, you could tap into any of them. It's, it's very, not exactly the same thing, but. It's so. very, uh, I guess it's kind of reminiscent of that, but all of the characters are, um, definitely apart like as much as they're together they're also apart so right. they they tap into each other's um skills but it's not like uh i don't know at the same time i feel like because in in season two they focus more on how there are other sense like sense they call it i guess they just call them sensates um there are other sensates uh, in the world so other groups of people do the same things that they can well, Except cool. I just feel like the main characters kind of hit the jackpot with the people they were connected with. Yeah. Um they're so they're a professional actor, um, a chemist, a uh a essentially police sergeant. Okay. A, well not yeah. I don't know if he's a sergeant, but he's like tra trained in the police academy. Um, a safe cracker and like general like kind of mobster style guy a uh like professional hacker a like 
Who else is there? Like the just the number of people that they have. Oh, and like I guess the the least influential person out of all of them is like the DJ, but she's also kind of like tapped into the underground so she can find drugs and stuff. Like so like the just the mm. sheer variety of people that they have connected is just like ha they got really lucky with the kind of people that got connected. It feels Which like in a situation yeah. where eight random yeah. people suddenly got tied together. Um you could have well, some loser who s sleeps on his couch all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. Me yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, uh, this other group of sensates over here. Wow. Now I have eight different kinds of depression. You. I mean, uh, yeah. Right. You could have like like me, where I have the amazing ability to order pizza online. <laughs> I don't know. Motherfucking. <laughs> yeah, you know, you'll be me. Oh wow! Holy shit! This alcohol isn't doing anything to me. Oh, I, I have to drink more. So while it, you know, I mean, you have to suspend your, sus early, you have to suspend your disbelief to kind of a large extent to kind of accept the premise in the first place. Yeah, but just the fact that they that. seem to also hit the jackpot just kind of stretches it a little bit further. Um, yeah. But I mean, if you well, maybe they're all you, extraordinary people. Maybe the sense eight thing only kind of affects extraordinary people. It's hard to say. Yeah, um, they know, haven't really that. revealed too many, but at least a couple that they really, like, revealed in other groups have been not as skilled as they were, and they're kind okay. of, like, because they are so varied in, in their skills, uh -huh. um, they have been able to, like, go up against a large, like, super evil corporation that basically nobody else has even been able to touch because they just have such a large variety so in addition to having that mobster who's a, like essentially a firearms expert they also yeah. have a um like south korean investment banker who is a like martial arts expert so like not only are they skilled in hand-to-hand -hand combat they're skilled in um like f like all forms of firearms both because like one dude's a police officer and this other dude's a mobster and then yep. they also like are a driving expert because one of the dudes is like this guy from um, Kenya who is like really skilled at driving like large vehicles. So it's it's just kind of like I don't know. It seems now, like man, they, they really hit the jackpot. Do they always have these abilities, or do they have to like concentrate on? Um, the way that it like, seems to kind of work. Yeah. The seems that, the way it seems to kind of work is the. The person has to draw on each other's skills, so the other person has to kind of be paying attention to, to like, help them. So, okay. um... So the person with the skill has to, like, intentionally... Well, they're kind of, like, telepathically connected, but the way that right. they kind of, um, uh, portray it in the show is in scenes where they need the mixed martial artist person, uh -huh. they, they show the woman who's the, art, the mar martial artist fighting even though that is technically a different person so okay. they kind of portray it that way but okay. it so yeah there are situations where the other people are like unconscious or for some reason are unable to tap into the other eight people or the other and seven they people can't use, they can't yeah and use then they during that period of time they don't have access to those skills that's so, pretty cool yeah well, it, it's you came online on skype good hey <laughs> Finally. So, I, I would definitely Maybe we recommend can get our podcast it. podcast started now. <laughs> I would definitely recommend it, though. If you have issues with sexual content, there's a lot of that. So, be warned. Who has issues with that? Am I right? <laughs> I mean, some people do. Um. So that's what I've watched this week. Do you want to touch on anything before we move into games, Dawson? Oh no, I I don't really watch it. I heard, okay. <laughs> I heard through the grapevine that Ooh. there was a new episode of Doctor Who. Uh, the entire season is I thought, oh. Wow. <laughs> you see, I don't watch no, things. No, let me explain. Let me explain. Dawson, remember, if you will remember, we did watch the last Christmas episode of Doctor Who. And I think both of us agreed, wow, that was kind of bad. Okay. It was okay. It wasn't. I don't watch I don't know, Doctor I didn't Who. Really feel like an episode of Doctor Who at all, but yeah, I'm excited no. for more BoJack Horseman. It's coming oh. soon. I know it. 
Apparently, I, I did read something about, like, apparently, well, you probably should watch the season of Doctor Who, Dalson, just because of the fact that it's going to be, and I quote, the last season of the Moffat era, which probably means they're going to get someone new to keep it fucking going. Oh, no. Um, uh, apparently Clara's coming back. I mean, it makes sense with the way they set her up, but I, I haven't really been watching that, obviously, by the fact that I didn't even know. This doctor's ending at the end of the season. I think uh, the doctor's uh, Peter Capaldi's doctor is already gone. The episode that I heard oh. about was him dying. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. Fuck. Yeah. I think that yeah. was the last episode that season. Mm-hmm. And I love the Peter Capaldi doctor. Don't like Clara. Kind of don't like her, but uh, I angry fucking Scottish doctor is everything I've ever wanted out of. Oh doctor. yeah, Peter Capaldi's a great doctor. And yeah, Jim, like, Peter Capaldi's great. It's like they hung on Matt, Matt Smith and David Tennant for like eight seasons yeah. each, and then Peter Capaldi got like one, two, two. Ooh, yeah, but I think that might have been his own choice, maybe. No, oh, that's yeah. I mean, I, same as uh, Christopher Eccleston, he didn't want to be known as the doctor, so he kind of left the show on bad terms. Meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, meanwhile, David Tennant, David probably, Tennant is, who yeah. is there for fucking ever, is still, did, like, did, played Purple Man, he played, like, he's doing all of this uh-huh, other stuff. He's Christopher doing Eccleston, stuff like, left, left that show <sighs> on such bad terms that in the special where they had, like, cameos of every single doctor, Christopher Eccleston was not included in those cameos. Like, oh, they yeah. digitally enhanced footage of, like, Doctors 1, 2, 3, they got actors that were lookalikes. To, to portray them, yeah. but Christopher Eccleston was just completely absent. It, like, mm-hmm. showed a lineup of all the Doctors, and then Christopher Eccleston's spot was just, like, a... It looked like a, a not-unlocked character in a fighting game. <laughs> it was just a shadow. <laughs> and it's and it sucks, because I also really like Christopher Eccleston. Yeah, I really like him. Was, he was, like, like, I feel like uh, Peter Capaldi would have been my favorite Doctor if Peter Capaldi had been, like, put in a better situation in which he could just be an angry, grace, grumpy, racist Scottish man and mm-hmm. have it just be hilarious. But unfortunately, he was put in, like, uh, kind of a bad position because Clara was sort of, like, it, it looked like, Cla- it felt like Clara was sort of taking, like, the reins on everything a little bit more than all of the rest of the companions had. And I wanted more of Peter Capaldi being grumpy. That's what I want. I want a grumpy (laughs) old man to play my doctor. Like, there were episodes that were just entirely Clara. Like, no no doctor. It's like, how do you have that in a show called Doctor Who? Also, the whole plot with uh, fucking Arya Stark was, you know, it's like, was that too? Um, Um, anyway... Yeah, moving on. Moving on from a, a Doctor Who season that none of us have watched. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, In the things we've watched section. Um, um but why we, don't you Yeah, Dolson, why don't you start by talking about um the Necromancer Diablo 3? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I have been playing a lot of that. I've been streaming some of it, but I've actually just mostly been leveling him on my own. Um he's very fun. Obviously, I'm going for a minion build, which, why would you not? Um, I, I personally I, the, liked the, the bone build in, a, in Diablo 2. They, they have that, too. There's a lot of, like, bone shit, like, you, too. Yeah. But, but um, you know, I, I have... Basically, every time you kill something with the Necromancer, regardless of your equipped abilities, you generate corpses. Now, some abilities consume corpses instead of mana. Like, obviously, Corpse Explosion will consume corpses. Um, corp- there's, there's another one called Corpse Lance, which is really good single-target damage, but the problem is it doesn't generate corpse. Like, like you use Corpse Lance, it pops a corpse to shoot a really yes. Is it like... Is corpses like a resource, or is it like they they fall on the ground, but you use so you them do as use a them near while you're in that area? Yeah. Okay. Um, his resource is essence, which he just generates like the same way as rage on a barbarian. Um, I, that's something I don't like about Diablo Three. Like the only person who uses mana is the witch doctor, even, um. Even the the mage uses like arcane power, 
which you generate by casting like magic missile and shit you know like easy spells you generate arcane power i don't like that i would prefer a lot of people to have mana like the barbarian using rage makes sense what difference does it make well the difference is when you're using mana when you when you have like a large mana pool you expend mana that regenerates over time like eight like like you have five thousand mana to spend on a bunch of spells and when you run out of mana you're out of mana for a long time so you have to manage it whereas with something like rage you you have to sit there and attack something to ever get it back like you run out of rage and it, that's it if you don't use an ability that generates rage it's just gone and that's how this? most of the classes make that's how most of the classes work. Oh, so like like the wizard spell power or whatever is like that as well. Yes. Huh. Like, well, like I think that they just didn't want to have mana. I guess, but the the witch doctor yeah. has mana, so. I, but well, yeah, I, yeah, but he doesn't, he doesn't use mana, mana potions. potions. Yeah. Um. And and he has attacks that recharge mana too. Like, yeah. And, yeah, so, and like. Crusader has Wrath, which is expended a lot like mana. Hmm. Although um, I don't remember if... I have stuff that regenerates her mana. So I don't actually know if... Um, if it starts empty or starts full. I think it starts full. Uh, the yeah, Demon so Hunter's think... resource system I actually really do enjoy. You know, it's got a refilling... Like like half and half, half of it is, is oh, yeah. constantly refilling, and then spending that generates its other resource, and then that other resource is used for like, strong attacks. Like hatred, it's discipline and hatred. So so your hatred is constantly refilling because hate demons, and then discipline I believe you get from attacking. You um, have to like balance which, which spends yeah. which, and exactly. Like, yeah. with my Necromancer for a while, I was just using Corpse Lance. I wasn't using anything that generated Essence, but the problem is, the Necromancer does not regenerate Essence, period. It has three attacks that give you Essence, and that's it. Well, I think so you basically have to have that. You might, you might, um, run into items that give you... Essence probably over time. yeah like like you like necromancer uniques will probably give you essence yeah like even if it was a small there's also a passive that every time you kill something you get two percent of your essence back but that's not enough to kill shit with essence attacks you know you know what i mean yeah like, but i mean i i kind of like i don't mind the idea of it being balanced again yeah it just, you you have to use up a slot on essence generation. And the way that I wanted to set him up was just to, just to use corpses and minions, right? The problem is some of your minions, most of your minions actually have a passive and an active. So, like, your golem will have an active that does something depending on what type of golem you have, but it uses essence to cast. And your skeletons can, like, bum rush something and boost up their damage but it, that also costs essence to attack and you passively generate the golem and the skeletons when they die um the way i wanted to set it up was just so that my minions would kill shit make corpses and then i would use the corpses to kill more shit but i could not have it set up that way i had to have essence um, yeah but at the same time like other I, you can kind of think of it this way, like, you can't have a character that has nothing but, like, in in the example of mana, right? Mm -hmm. If you remove health, or uh, mana potions, obviously, um, you can't have nothing but high resource mana spells. You need something yeah. that costs less mana so that you don't have yeah, something. Yeah, you need, a way, you need yeah. a way to create it. So, you need a just like with the necromancer, he technically has two resources. He has his essence and then corpses. Because anything that consumes a corpse on the ground does not cost essence. So that was my thought. Like, oh, if I can just generate corpses, I don't need essence because it consumes that instead of essence. But I, I still need it to generate the initial corpses by yeah. killing something. Right. Um, so the way I have it set up now is I, I wanted to use revive, right? Which will just... It's actually way better than Diablo 2's Revive. It just revives 
all of the corpses in an area to fight for you for like 20 seconds or something and then it's on a 15 second cooldown that actually does sound really cool yeah. i do kind of like I mean, I, I really like the Diablo 2 revive. Um, yeah, where you just I, 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 I love, like, I just, I love the beautiful irony of killing all of Satan's minions, <laughs> summoning his ass, and being like, hey, remember these? Yeah. They're pissed off. Yeah, it's, it's pretty funny. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah. Do you. So, is your essence generation abilities like your auto attack? Yeah, they're like your auto, auto attack. So. So, I mean, so you only have three. You have, like, a channeled single target ability that drains life. Um, it generates essence really slowly, but it heals you for 2% of your maximum health every couple of... Or, like, every second. So it's really good I mean, for surviving. I think it's fair to have one essence generation ability be your auto attack, because it's like that on most characters. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So. Um, and then there's there's... He does it in the, he does it in Heroes of the Storm too. This is an ability straight from Heroes of the Storm, except he doesn't have to spend anything on it. He uses uh he he like takes a big spectral scythe and like sweeps across people. That one's the one I'm using because it generates the most essence. It generates essence per target hit instead of a flat amount. So if I'm like wade into the group of things with my with my skeletons, I can just sit there and, like, attack and get all of my essence back really fast so that I can keep exploding corpses and using... I don't even remember what my essence spender is, but it's it's some really good one. Corpse Explosion, by the way, gets a rune, which it doesn't make corpses just explode on the ground. It makes them, like, pop up into little skittering spiders and then bum rush an enemy and then explode on them. It makes it so good. I love it. Mm. Um, that said, here's, here's something that I should touch on about the Necromancer. He costs $15 for just the Necromancer. That's all you get, is the ability to play the Necromancer class. Like, all of the content that came out with the Necromancer, all of the items, the, like, when, when, when it was the Crusader, it was like $30, but it was for an expansion pack. It came with a whole new act and everything, and a new character, a bunch of new items, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But the Necromancer, all it comes with is the Necromancer. So I feel like fifteen dollars is a little pricey. Uh, I'm really torn on this because I feel like, yeah, when Reaper of Souls came out, it was what thirty dollars. Yeah. But it, and it came with the act. So if you say half of that content was was the character, it probably does take a lot to design the character relative to the act maybe i can kind of see it i don't know i'm i'm torn I on just, it I, on, on one hand I, I feel like it might be a little bit a little bit much but at the same time like the, the people probably about... care more about the characters than they do about the act because of adventure mode anyway yeah i don't know do really don't i'm pretty torn on it and and it's a little weird just because like I like I, I don't know I don't know if I really like all this, uh, especially when Pat of Exile is fucking free. Um, but like Blizzard has been doing a lot of stuff to sort of subvert the whole like pay a shit ton of money for this DLC content and stuff. I really feel like they've been really good about that for like their last all of their games, fucking Hearthstone, which yeah, it's a card. To be fair though, to be fair though, Diablo yeah. three is like the only game where you don't have a bunch of Aid cosmetics the same way. right it's true so I mean, their only real like income resource is actual purchases yeah. because yeah. it's funded a little bit differently maybe you can maybe that like makes i can the... see that maybe i don't know yeah but uh, uh well that's the thing i don't know why they don't just put fucking co cosmetics in diablo 3 i mean there I are just... cosmetics in path of exile so i like sure. like oh. okay don't get me wrong i'm completely against them gating even more content Oh yeah, but yeah, it, it sounds it just feels really strange to me that you put every single little bit of content in the game. There's like 40 new unique items that came out with the Necromancer expansion for among other among like all of the classes. Yeah. There are like a bunch of new attacks and stuff. There's there's just all kinds of new stuff they added to the game, but it's all there if you don't have the Necromancer. 
the only thing you are paying for in the Rise of the Necromancer expansion pack is the Necromancer, because the rest of the content in it is free. Mm. Which, don't get me wrong, I don't want them to gate more content behind right. the paywall, but just sort of it, just, it just feels strange. Like, why would they yeah. make an expansion pack and then make you pay for only one small portion of the expansion pack? So, I yeah. guess in, that, in, the, in defense of that, like... The one piece of that that it would make sense to pay for would be the character. I yeah. Think. Yeah. Um, the character, like, if you want to break it down into work for how what that character is, there's, like, visual design. You have to kind of make armor sets, like, unique, like unique armor sets for him. You got to balance um, the character around the game. Yeah, you have to have, like, exists. there's, like, what, N... <laughs> And abilities with five variants on each ability. No, there's like there's like thirty abilities with like ten variants on each ability, and is then there, a bunch of passives. Like 30, that you yeah, can not slot. counting the yeah. passives. I thought I thought okay. there was only like no. Well, let's see. There's 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 left click, right click, Q W E and R, and each of no, those but... have four. So left click one, two, okay, three, so... four, one, two, three, four. 8, 12, 16, 20, 24 abilities right. on most so, characters. Some of them only have with, 3. With 6 variants? Or is it 5 Yes, yeah, it's 6. Yeah, 6 variants so, each. I mean, if you break it down just in raw numbers of different abilities that they have to balance, like that is kind of a lot. It is. So, especially if... I don't, I don't even remember. Is there even P PvP in that game? Uh, there is, but nobody plays it. Okay, well, yeah. I remember PvP being a bigger deal in Diablo 2, but, I mean, but yeah. still, technically, it should be balanced. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Even if exactly. no one really plays it, like, it should be balanced against the other characters, so, I mean, like... Just just, just in case someone does, you know. $15 yeah. for only the people who want to play the Necromancer kind of seems fair to me. It does. It, I mean, it's, yeah. it's it seems fair. I feel like it should maybe be cheaper, because... Like, yes, it's a lot of work, but when it comes down to it, it's just one small piece of content. You can still get all of the content that's included with... Night, it's Night of the Necromancer, I think. All of the content included with Night of the Necromancer, every bit of content that you... That, that Blizzard is calling content well, from Night of the Necromancer. Would, free. would it be worth $15 if all of the content they added for free was included if it were gated probably it would be it would be worth yeah it would be worth more but of course then that would like leave a worse taste in people's mouth because you're getting well, content that isn't so, related to the necromancer but coming out at the same time so well yeah but i mean you could say the same thing with the crusader mm -hmm. i mean other than the additional ad, yeah, but but Reaper of Souls was new story content. Either way, and, though, I, yeah. What I'm saying is, if you do include all of that stuff that they did release for free with the Necromancer, then maybe it, like fifteen dollars isn't a bad asking price for what that is anyway. Right. I don't know. <laughs> Ultimately, I mean, like, I think it's in kind of a price point that people will either. Like, if they want to play the Necromancer, buy it, and if they don't mm -hmm. want to, they won't. Like, I don't think it's so outrageous in price that people are going to really complain about it. Yeah. But I don't think it's cheap enough that people would necessarily pick it up on a whim. Yeah. Um, it does seem it like... It does seem well, weird, I mean, I did, I did pick it up on a whim. I hadn't played Diablo for, like, a year. Well, either way. I, yeah. I, I think just generally. I, I think that... Uh, <laughs> It is kind of funny, though, because now all of those Diablo 3 battle chests all over the place are going to be missing a key content. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they're going to change unless, that retroactively they or something. Increase the, they might increase the MSRP and include it with the battle chest. Because I believe the way yeah, they do not, battle chests now is... Not retroactively. Well, I would assume... Because those are still on shelves, I know for a fact. Oh, here, um... It all apparently also includes character slots and stash tabs, so you're yeah, getting some that. value out of that because you would normally have to pay for those too. 
But yeah, that but I said, really I don't ever those. feel like I have needed more stash tabs or character slots. Well, um, maybe I could see you do, character you do slots. Get I could ones. see character slots possibly for me, but I don't think I would ever buy stash tabs, especially since character slots does make sense because it's giving you a new character. Right, especially with seasons, um, like clearing out your stash tabs anyway a lot of the time. Like yeah. it feels like pointless. I don't know. Yeah, if you like if you like seasonal characters, which I do, there's no season running right now, so I was kinda just dicking around on the necromancer. It kind of like uh, kind of like, like ladder seasons, characters so. in Diablo 2, right? Yeah, exactly. Um you have to start from scratch. And I've got like five billion gold in non season, and I don't even know why, because I didn't think I was that rich. But hey, you know. No. So is there anything else you played? Um um, Other than I've uh, been playing Law Darkest Breakers. Dungeon. Oh yeah, you've been uh, playing more of that. Have your I thoughts don't even changed much on I, that? No, my my thoughts haven't changed a ton, but I'm I am just kind of getting better at like managing resources because it is it's still like a resource management game in yeah. the end. Like I I'm getting better able to kind of gauge when I need to retreat from dungeon. Retreating from dungeons is not a bad thing to do. That's a really good thing to do in Darkest Dungeon because you keep all of the loot. You just don't get the bonus loot for the quest. It's like a um yeah like a push your luck say, kind of deal. Exactly. I still say fuck the Crimson Court. Like I've I've like tried the, I've tried no 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 not not the DLC but the the dungeon the Crimson Court right. specifically the place yeah. yeah. Um, it's just like, what, you, like every room it gives you scouting, right? But it, you get to a certain point and the, the dungeon's always the same for the first three rooms. And then you get to the, the fourth room and it branches off into three directions. And from there it's completely randomized. Um, but those three different directions are not interconnected at all. So you have to go all the way up one direction, looping up and down and around and out, and you finally get to the end, and it's like, oh no, my quest objective wasn't on this path at all, and I've cleared the entire area. So that big windy path, you now have to go back around over loop to loop, and all the while, because there's no such thing as a torch in the Crimson Court, you are constantly gaining stress because you right. can't have bright light. You, you can't keep your light going, so you're g gaining stress as you're backtracking, which really sucks because stress is more likely to kill you than HP damage. So, in a way, they did, like, your best bet is going down one path and hoping RNG will be your Let's quest. you complete the quest objective, right? Because you have yeah, to burn down, sucks. like, you have to burn down three things for the very first quest in the Crimson Court. And it kind of sucks even more because... As long as you don't have that quest complete, once you discover the Crimson Court, your town is permanently, um, it, it's reduced the amount of stress you can recover in town, permanently. Nice. So once you complete that quest, I think that'll get rid of that debuff, but... I just can't complete that quest. I've tried it like 10 times, and every time I wind up either losing a few people, everybody gets inflicted with vampirism and I have to retreat, which vampirism, again, is permanent until you find a way to cure it, which I'm sure involves going through the quest line in that dungeon. Um, or, um, or I just, like, like, can't get through enough, like, there's too much stress that's going on and my characters start having a heart attack. So I'm thinking I'm going to need to bring, like, a whole squad of characters that can heal and return stress. So what's really bad about that dungeon is there's no spot to camp. You don't get firewood, but it's as big as a dungeon that would require firewood. So And since you have usually, to backtrack a lot. Yeah. You're just constantly like, getting stress. Even bigger. Exactly. So it's 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 really it's very difficult. I think it Pretty might rough. need some rebalancing. Like not because like obviously the game is supposed to be difficult, but when you compare it to other dungeons that are supposed to be the same amount of challenge, that particular dungeon is very, very difficult and long. Like, it's supposed to be a short level 1 dungeon, and it feels like a medium level 3 or 4 dungeon, you know? Yeah. Um, 
I played a little bit of Guild Wars today earlier on my stream. Um, oh, I good. did I did Ascalonian Catacombs with Guild Wars Two, of course. I did Ascalonian Catacombs with some pugs, and uh, I came in like after somebody le had left because they wiped to Kohler. Lieutenant Kohler with the, the spinning dagger attack. They wiped to him like eight times. And so somebody left and I joined their party because I wanted to do Ascalonian Catacombs to level up my Revenant. And they were like, okay, stack here. And I was like, I see the problem. <laughs> so they all stacked up, pulled Lieutenant Kohler into a little stupid fucking corner like they always oh. do. And then, like, like, some bosses that works on, right? Some right. you can just get there and stack up and just heal yourselves, buff yourselves, and just constantly damage. But Lieutenant Kohler has an ability where he spins around and turns himself into a fucking meat grinder. So why would you want to everybody to stack in a corner and then what? get meat grindered on? So why doesn't this once he started, work? once he started doing his meat grinder, I had to use stability for everybody because so that you know. They didn't get pulled by his scorpion wire. I used stability for everybody. Fucking, fucking left, and then like two or three of them still died cool. by standing in the meat grinder because they were stacking. The other guy got the hint and left with me, and the two of us were able to kill Lieutenant Kohler. I think I think <laughs> what a lot of people don't seem to grasp about that game is the designers specifically design the game so that you can't do that yeah so yeah. Like, the like, fact like, that they're like trying to to do it anyway is like mind-boggling uh, yeah, yeah and then the like thing. one like like when i had joined one guy was like hold on we're not damaging him fast enough i'll switch to more dps and it's like no you're fucking dying when he has like a third of his health missing it's not because yeah. you aren't damaging him fast enough it's because, yeah, because you're, you're dying <laughs> Yeah, like, and it, especially since the scorpion create. wire, like, at worst you can dodge it. Yeah. Like if you if you are paying attention, you can dodge the that attack. <laughs> like yeah. yeah. Like um, or like, if you have a guardian and the guardian has good timing, like the guardian can save them too. Like it's yeah, you can like reflect project Aegis everybody or get get like right. a projectile. Like it's just reflect. I don't know. It's ridiculous. To me. It's yeah. I don't. I don't want to get. I don't want to get deep into Guild Wars game, though. But, yeah. yeah. Well, well, it's like super deep. Add, it, it was, it was fun. Point. Yeah, you know. yeah. Um, and then I went through some of the new zones, just trying to do map completion for one of my legendary look. Not, not legendary weapons, but my uh, the druid special class weapon, which is Yggdrasil. You have to get like complete a collection, and man, it's a lot of work. Um, I know. Yeah, that's why I never even bothered to start. Yeah. Um, but I really like the look of the weapon. I'm gonna try for it eventually. Uh, that's pretty much the only thing that I can think of that I played this week. Again, besides Lawbreakers, which we've done a whole video Yeah, I think on. we'll talk about yeah. that at the end. Anything yeah. else from you, Phil? Uh, that I played? Nah, Planet Coaster, that was it. Oh, right. Well, as far started. as new stuff, yeah. Did you do, uh... <laughs> Just, uh... It started with me. Did you do more Wolfenstein? Uh... More... Uh, okay, that's that fine. depends on what you. Well, okay. I do one thing I do want to talk about with Wolfenstein because I did play more of Wolfenstein. By which I mean I uh, sort of went through New some order. of the stuff that I'd already done with Wolfenstein because I needed footage for a video. Um, I had to do that, and then I had to do that again because the footage that I got wasn't didn't have any sound. And uh, I, when I was actually playing it, I wasn't like super pissed. I was like, okay, I have to go through this exact same shit again. Here we fucking go. Uh, Wolfenstein's a very open-ended game, and it's fun to play. That's the biggest thing that I can say. While going through these things and getting this footage, I had fun playing the video game. Right. And that's 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 just the key, ain't it? That's the thing you want to go for. You want your video game to be fun. And Wolfenstein is fun, so I'm happy with it. So Wolfenstein gets a thumbs up for me. Nice. Same thing since the last two weeks, but you know, it just it just keeps surprising me. Play the same shit over and over again doesn't get boring. Some fucking how. Ah, so what? Mm, I do have one more game. Me and Fell played a little bit of it. Oh. Uh, Path of Exile is running oh. an event called Two Week Mayhem. 
Oh yeah. If you get into the leaderboards on that event, you have a chance at winning a beta key for Fall of Oriath, which no nah, man, you just got you just need to get to level thirty, you get three hundred beta you, keys. Yeah. Three hundred um, unpaid like chances. You have three hundred fucking beta keys. Yeah, you want to get two hundred ninety nine of your friends. Yeah. <laughs> So we got beta keys coming out the wazoo. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe for a beta key. We don't have oh, beta you, keys. We have fucking I'm 300 sorry, beta keys. We don't have any beta keys. <laughs> Not actually. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's yeah. Um, we played on in this event called Two Week Mayhem, which two week just means it runs for two yeah. weeks and you get as far as you can. But the Mayhem event is really fun because each map has a unique modifier called. That is like either there's 20 strong boxes, which are just things with hella loot in them. There might be 20 breaches in a map, which are like, like kind of like almost king of the hill zones where you have to defend waves of monsters. Or there will be like 20 invasion bosses, which are just which stupidly are strong members. enemies. And, and those can sometimes really fun. happen at the very like, very... changes. Yeah, and the invasion bosses can, uh, when, when I first started, the invasion bosses were the, uh, uh, first thing that showed up in the first area and here's the thing like per area like per like the specific area that this is like the the twilight strand the you know fucking caverns um there is a specific one for that area for like that hour and hourly it changes so you can go back to the other area and it'll be like a different one in the different next thing, hour. yeah yeah and cool. like the first time i played it, it was like 20 invasion bosses in the very first area before i had any loot and let me tell you that's just a lot of fun is there, oh, a, is, there a, is there a date when that content's supposed to come out? Um, uh, I believe they're shooting for... Uh, it's fucking, like, two months from now? God, I don't know, yeah, late August? Yeah, something like okay. that. Everything yeah. comes out in late August. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of things that come out in late August, why don't we talk <laughs> about Lawbreakers now? I don't want to get will... too deep into it, because after this video, I'm going to upload a two-hour impression <laughs> discussion yeah. that we have on it, so... Um, the stream, the why don't we just kind of keep it quick and then we'll okay. go into a break before you go into me. Sure, sure. That's okay. Good. Uh, quick review of Lawbreakers. It's fun as hell. I yeah, love it. It's fun as hell. <laughs> it's we, it's I, like a class-based it. Unreal. It's it's great. Yeah, and it I, feels yeah. like an Unreal. Yeah. Um, I don't, yeah, I haven't had that much fun in a long time. Yeah. Um, I'm really a fan of it. <laughs> Hopefully yeah. it does well. Oh, actually, hold on a second. There, there is something I want to get into that we absolutely didn't get into uh, last time when we talked about Lawbreakers. Uh, the, uh, and this isn't really like a point on the game, but last night, right, me and Sane were in a game, and this was, this was a lot of fun. For some reason, whenever me and Sane get in a game and we play games, like, together... Like without Dawson, we always end up with like the uh, the the fucking assholes in the game just constantly bitching. Like there's the story we tell of it. Don't push the cart. Oh my save, god! I'll save Dawson. for a fucking other game. Dawson, oh, yeah, we had we someone complain that on Blitzball, Bell was protecting the goal. Yeah, they had someone complain about me being that the goalie. That is so it was like, strange. Like he said I he was camping. <laughs> And I technically was, so... You were camping, but it's like that's... <laughs> like, that one particular thing solves a lot of my problems with Capture the Flag game modes. The fact that there's a guy who can literally wall off the flag. And the best part is, this man, this man constantly complains, like, go back to your fucking spot. Oh yeah, you're just fucking standing there camping. Um, he you like have came to... to me twice, right? He came to me, he comes to me... He fucking ults to try to kill me. He's playing the uh, the two dagger character. I just shoot him three times and he ends up fucking dead on my feet. Literally I never do, killed I me. I do the think the game. juggernaut is a little bit strong. Yeah. Um, but that said, if you saw him first, then the assassin's doing the wrong we thing. We saw each other at the same time. Which counts as far as the assassin is concerned for you seeing him first. Yeah, right, that's <laughs> fair. Fucking... Uh, yeah, the he, assassin he, is good at killing everyone quickly except for the job. But yeah. I think that's intended. <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. Yeah, this this fucking this fucking guy just constantly complains, Oh, you're so fucking bad at the game. You just sit there and camp. I'm I'm pretty good at this game. But that's why I and specifically the character yeah. that's good at um, being goalie. And that's why I play goalie is because if they come for me, they die. 
<laughs> Which is funny because I remember in tribes you always played the flag running light class. Always. Mm -hmm. Even though there were goalie classes that were basically designed the exact same way. No, it was tribe. it was really ridiculous because Yeah, yeah I don't know, yeah. like how how can you say because in he a was, game he where was you're mad that he your goal just... that you're camping? Yeah. Like, but, yeah. yeah, he he was mad that he couldn't just go back and forth between his fucking flag and win the game in four seconds for his team, like stupid the fucking two fort. The funny yeah. thing about that game though was, um, Bell was basically bored the whole time. If it hadn't been for that guy, he wouldn't have been able to shoot anything because the ball never came to our side anyway. <laughs> Oh yeah, so. and, you know, yeah, yeah, and that's that's the thing. He's like, holy shit, you know, you you, you need to, you need to fucking get good. Yes. Well, you know why you come to try to kill me, you would die. He was complaining about camping, but their team never had the ball anyway. So like, I don't, yeah. I don't yeah. even know why. Well, you know why uh, you always get matched with the assholes who just bitch when I'm not you playing just... with you, right? Oh, is it is it because you are the asshole? It's because I am the asshole that does nothing but uh -huh. bitch. So you yeah, know, it was you don't do it like, to someone one. you don't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Fucking, I I don't. It's it's just so weird. We had Maybe... this other game where we had this other game where we had a teammate who was like, "Ball, ball, go on the ball. Everyone get on the ball, except <laughs> Robot Man." <laughs> Except yes, Robot Man, who's not the goalie. goalie. You, you're good. You keep, you keep doing what you do. Everyone get on the ball. Get on the point. Uh, except Robot except, Man. Except, except you, robot man. You can't. Man, you that's can't. Right. You yeah, you do you. You do you, you, you boo-boo. <laughs> I don't know. That was, that was like the opposite problem. We had someone so enthusiastic yeah. telling everyone what to do and was mad at like everyone except for Fell. Yes. Mm -hmm. I have simple job. I guard go. If they try to kill me, I kill them. They don't expect me to be guarding goal. And if they do expect me to be guarding goal, well, they're not good enough to shoot. Yeah, so everything I love about Basically Lawbreakers is it's so much faster than pretty much anything else that's mm -hmm. out right now. I haven't tried Quake Live yet. Um, Aside from Tribes. Or not Quake, Quake Live. That's uh, the whole point of the game. I can't what's play the new Quake no called? Do you remember what the new Quake called? Is it Quake Arena? Quake, Quake Arena, yeah. Yeah, I haven't tried the new Quake yet, but... Um, shooter, yeah. the one. But yeah, this one definitely like makes me feel like I'm playing a, uh, like a good arena shooter, but mm -hmm. it has the the um hero shooter elements that make a lot of modern games. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm really excited for it to come out. Right. Definitely gonna be like a day one buy for me. I, for I sure. Yeah. Lawbreakers is super fun. Yeah, it's great. Okay, so we'll go to a break. Be back in, I don't know, 15 years. 13 minutes so that, so we'll come back at 520. Okay. Sounds good. good. All right, cool. Okay. We'll see you guys later. Right, just I promise moment, next though. week I'll actually have a bumper so I can, like, not stop the stream midstream, but I'm going to okay. be back in. in. All right. <laughs> Hi, and we're back. Hi. So, for the last hour, we're going to talk about movie and gaming news. So, Bell, why don't you start with the red carpet thing? I'm going to go let my cat out. Cause... Oh, okay. Good luck. Good luck with the cat. Um, I so here's what happened, and you might have heard about this. Uh, so you all know Hannibal Burris, the guy, uh, the the fucking Eric Andre guy. The guy who's on the Eric Andre show played a character in the new Spider-Man movie. Um, he paid five hundred dollars to have a look-alike appear as him on the red carpet. This man looked nothing like Hannibal <laughs> fucking Burris. Um, oh, I didn't. I didn't realize that part. But sp sp specifically, no. This is this is the thing. Um, specifically, uh, he paid a man five hundred dollars who who I'm pretty sure looks nothing like him, sounded nothing like him, to just appear on the red carpet i love this man <laughs> who funny. uh who did the person play uh coach oh he played a one of the coach in spider-man high in spider-man high, in Spider high okay. school he played coach from left for dead 2 uh he did not. and like if you're gonna cast anyone like yeah. i want armor yeah 
Uh, if you're going to play anyone to beat Mr. Cheeseburger Apocalypse, I feel like Hannibal Burris would be a very good <laughs> choice to play Coach from Left 4 Dead 2 in this new Spider-Man film. Um, so, so good casting choice and bad casting choice by Hannibal Burris playing Hannibal <laughs> Burris. Not doesn't look like him at all. This is it, like this. This isn't like news did that he has like, any significance to the film world, but it's funny as fuck. Did he like pay the lookalike who doesn't look anything like him at all on purpose? Yes. Okay. Yes, like, like he knew. That's, yeah. 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 Um, and he was interviewed by, like, um, all, all, all of the big fucking people as Hannibal Burris, you know, just, like, well, what, what was it like, uh, there's, there's this one specific video, I can't remember, uh, it was, like, a Disney affiliate video or something, something like that, one of the, one of the, like, uh, big hype builders for Disney interviewed, uh, the, this Hannibal Burris look like it was just like yeah it was uh, it was really great to work on Spider Man you know this is this is the thing it's been all of our childhoods uh, working with Tom Holland was great I, I really loved it uh, <laughs> Hannibal Burris doesn't exactly like to appear in public all that much and the people are speculating like this is why you don't want to appear in public and go on this do this big fucking Hollywood shindig thing he doesn't look that but, dissimilar from it. it I, I don't know. <laughs> Hold I on. think the uh, biggest difference for me is the glasses. But <laughs> okay, hold on. Oh shit! Here, here. Uh, oh, oh, you got you got a picture of him? Yeah. Uh, scroll down. Okay. This guy looks Joker. nothing like what? Okay, that's okay. So, uh, uh, let me just yeah, find like just a regular ass picture of Hannibal Burris from like like the fucking uh, just like. Hmm. Shit. Here's These what- people... oh, here we are. Here's what uh, Hannibal I... Burris looks like. Yeah, yeah, uh, where is- where's the fucking- that- cause... Shit. Um... I don't know, I think the look like- like, looks significantly different. Like, yeah. yes, the glasses are the big thing, but like, the look like like bottom the bottom half of his face is thinner. Hannibal Burris's face oh, yeah. is more round around. Yeah, yeah, section. Hannibal Burris is much of a- oh. yeah. The look like well, this might just be the glasses, but the lookalike has smaller eyes. <laughs> yeah, um, this is a, uh, this is a comparison between the two, but this one's really bad because, um, uh, like, uh, Hannibal Burris is, like, lit really weird. Uh, here's, like, here's, here's a, here's a better picture of That lookalike isn't the guy who played Luke Cage, is it? I don't think so. Oh, no. shit, no, I fucked that link up. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, completely fucked up a link. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I don't think so. Uh, there we go. But yeah, uh, yeah, th th this man looks significantly different than Hannibal Burris. Um, <laughs> I think it looks different enough that you can tell it's not him. Mm. That's the point. <laughs> yeah, and also it doesn't sound any anything to... like Han Hannibal Burris. So, oh, yeah. Uh, I don't really have a way to him. show this on the podcast, but, uh. Whatever. Well, okay, so for those of you who don't know, we're looking at images of Hannibal Burris. Uh, you can, you. This is a, uh, this is a podcast that you're, you're playing along with us. You can Google what that guy man looks like. It's, it's like Dora let's, the uh, Let's move on before this turns into any more of a train wreck. How about it's that? like multiplayer <laughs> notepad. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no. Uh, again, it's not super significant to anything, but it's just funny as fuck and beautiful, and I love Hannibal Burris. I love this man. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let, let's move on. Oh, uh, shit. What other shit we got in movies while we're on that particular topic? Uh, Tommy huh? Wiseau blocks... Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Tommy Wiseau blocked the documentary of The Room with a court order, which raises more questions than <laughs> answers. Tommy Wiseau, local man who has money that nobody knows where he got it, blocks investigation into how he got money. So the uh, the documentary is called Room Full of Spoons, and on their website they have a statement that says they were blocked uh, by a court ordered injunction on June fourteenth. So at this time, that's all that they can say about it. But could have been drugs. Yeah, I don't know. I <laughs> Tommy was out, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Oh, my cat's free. We don't know where he came from. 
we don't know where he got the money to afford two fucking cameras, one film camera and one uh, digital camera that he doesn't know how to use, neither of which he knows how to use. Maybe he got the money from, from this uh, man. Drugs. Could have been no, drugs. Maybe, maybe he got the money because Gang he's a ties. space alien who has only vaguely studied human society. And on his planet, trees are made from gold and wood is a valuable resource. And wood is made from American dollars. <laughs> Um, I, I just, I just imagine, well, I, when you, when you first started saying that, what I thought you were going to say is, uh, you said, like, uh, he is an alien who, uh, values money. Uh, what I thought you were going to say is he is an alien that vapes, which is also probably true. Um, knowing what Why I do I... about, um, it's Tommy Wiseau. I feel I mean, as though if anyone were to vape, it would why be Why would I say that? Know. Like, what kind of idiot would bring up vaping on a podcast stream? That's that's stupid. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Um, yeah, this... this it this wasn't thing, even on. <laughs> <laughs> he just, he just started stuck in his mouth. Yeah, we meet so I'm going to vape on this. It's not... Did you break it? <laughs> the cotton came out. <laughs> um... <laughs> oh my god, you guys. Ooh. So yeah, Tommy was always some sort of fucking horrible alien and or drug dealer or the Zodiac Killer. We don't know. And he refuses to let we us just find don't out. Know. The mystery continues. How would the Zodiac Killer have made him a lot of money? I don't know, but that is one thing that Tommy Wiseau mentions. Like, he had, like, the, the image for the Zodiac Killer painted on his car because he thought it looked cool. And, you know, uh, the, the guy who wrote the fucking Disaster Artist was like, he might be the Zodiac Killer, not gonna confirm or deny, but he straight up might be the fucking Zodiac Killer. Oh my god. I don't think the he world? has- I don't think he would be, like, skilled enough- to be the Zodiac Killer, because the Zodiac Killer did make that like that well, but yeah, puzzle that, like, that has still not been thing, cracked, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, and well, technically, the room is also a puzzle that hasn't been cracked. What if, <laughs> what if the room is the secret to proving that Tommy Wiseau is the Zodiac Killer? It's his final <laughs> magnum opus. <laughs> The room, like he 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 went into the room like I'm gonna make a brilliant film that that, that if you follow the paper trail you'll be able to find out that I'm the Zodiac Killer. Wow, this movie fucking sucks. Oh, hi, doggy. That's the, yeah, that's all that people focus on is this movie <laughs> fucking sucks. Yeah, he's so Shit, smart. He made, it, he made it bad enough that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Jesus. Uh, I love the room. I love Tommy Wiseau, and I love just the mystery surrounding it. The Enigma Code, the grand scheme of Tommy Wiseau, which no one to this day knows. Not even Greg Desero, the man who was Tommy's right-hand man and uh, co-star in the room. So many questions. So, so why questions. don't we move on? Anyway. <laughs> Quote from Sane about an hour and a half ago. I don't want to talk about the room. <laughs> <laughs> As we spend well, 15 minutes I'm going to talk it. about the room anyway. So let's move on to a much different Happier topic. Okay. Well, happy, or I don't know. We're going to talk about Man of Steel. Happier than the room. I hated it. But anyway, let's wow. actually so, talk about the article. Yeah. So, uh, according to a Bleeding Cool article, um... Brendan Connolly, the uh, the journalist there, talking to the screenwriter David Goyer about Man of Steel, and in the discussion that it came out that they had to, they had a scene in an earlier version of the script where Zod and his people destroyed Shanghai, um, which made which would have made the Metropolis fight look less disastrous than it did in the movie. Mm -hmm. is kind of the intention here. Uh, Disastrous as in resembling a natural disaster in <laughs> the universe, or well, no. resembling a natural disaster from a filmmaking standpoint? <laughs> uh, well, okay, okay, explain that to me. Like, like, as though I have not read the article, which I have. Explain it to me what you mean. Is it... Are you saying that the Shanghai scene would have made the Metropolis scene look well, like by comparison, by comparison, 
by comparison, they were just gonna outright destroy Shanghai. Uh -huh. For as a demonstration of their might. So the fact that Superman saved anybody in Metropolis would have softened the number of people that died in in that movie. <laughs> I, I suppose, I yeah, know. yeah, just, just like uh, they, they so just it, it would have made it, it would have made the Metropolis scene look like less of an in-universe tragedy. Yeah, right. Yeah, which part of the one, one of the key complaints about that movie was that uh, man a murder through through Superman's intervention, there was like a huge fight that destroyed a ton of shit in Metropolis. Yeah, not super uh, reminiscent Uncommon. of Superman. <laughs> Well, well, no, because well, uh, Superman, like, oh, Superman has better... collateral damage all over the fucking place. The only thing is, he goes so far out of his way to save every single life that he can. And he did and in that not movie, what happened straight in that up so yeah. buildings fall on people. So. Yeah, straight up. Like, uh, there were like, legitimate scenes of like fucking uh, uh, man guys running around fucking trying to save people and stuff. it's it's mystifying to me like in in any like traditional superman anything you would have seen him go like like okay yes superman being a fucking boy scout is kind of boring at this point we've seen it for 80 years well, that's but, who superman is but that's who superman is like yeah. i feel like if they had just like even if they had just added one scene where like I don't know, Zod fucking punches him through a building or some shit. I, I didn't even see the movie, because it I know it's bad. But if they added a scene where Zod punches him through a building, and he gets up, starts to go fight Zod again, and then he's like, oh no, that building's gonna kill a puppy, and then he, like, goes and catches the building and throws it off the screen, like, that would have been sufficient enough, like, 30 seconds to show Superman's trying to save people. Instead, I, I don't know. Instead even the, they, the even the amount of collateral damage, I would say, it was more than usually see <laughs> in in a yeah. Superman th like thing. Like yeah. they they destroyed that city. Yeah. Um, straight up. And coming it out of, like, I mean, I'm what they were sure. obviously doing is coming out of the Nolan Batman trilogy. They wanted to make a darker, grittier Superman, but. Superman is not dark and gritty, so it was a no, dumb idea. He really isn't. <laughs> um, no. Leading into the Justice League, which we're still feeling the repercussions of now. Yeah. Um. um I. I. And it, and it looks like they're going to try and lighten up with the Justice League. Uh, not visually, but they're going to lighten up with the Justice League, like you know, put more comedy and stuff in it. And now this can go one of two ways. You know, the, it had a bunch of good stuff like that in Wonder Woman. Wonder yeah, Woman. I was gonna Wonder say, Woman allegedly was a lot more balanced. Yeah. yeah, Wonder it, it definitely worked with Wonder Woman. Um, they tried really hard to go that route in Suicide Squad, and it did not work in that movie. So we're just gonna have to wait and see. From the sounds of it, Suicide Squad was more of an editing issue. Uh, well, uh, yeah, it, it, well, uh, that's what it yes, like. that, that was, was one a of key the problems. Issue, yeah. That was one of the many problems with Suicide oh, no. Squad. Yes. Um, but yeah, and also, um, you know, now, uh, I do, I do want to talk about, uh, why, why they did, uh, you know, sort of get rid of the Shanghai scene. Simply put, we can't have you fucking blowing up China because this movie has to play in fucking China and make us a billion goddamn dollars. Yeah, I thought the exact same thing. Well, yeah. actually, they said they cut it out because they didn't want to have another action scene. <laughs> Because that whole movie was action scenes, more or less, anyway. Well, the thing. That movie was three action scenes. At least you would have had, like, if it would have been, like, if, if, if it was, was like, the same runtime, it would have been four ten-minute action scenes rather than well, three action according scenes. According to the quote, it says, it was another five pages of crazy Kryptonian destruction. We didn't need it. <laughs> I, you know so... what? They made the right decision. <laughs> I don't say that much about like David Goyer and fucking Zack Schneider, but they made the right I choice. I mean, in that situation, here. yes. <laughs> yeah. All our other choices, not convinced. This one, good on you guys. You need to take that initiative more often. <laughs> So, did they go through Superman's origin story in Man of Steel 2? They did. I, by go through, you mean just sort of, like, jumps through it? Then yes, yes, they sort of did. They were like, well, okay, they, oh they no, went, they, send him to Earth. It's like, just like it. Goku. 
they did it more <laughs> they did it more in depth than most i think because they did they focused kind of a lot on his childhood which most superman thing so. well that at least makes sense because zod is one of the kryptonian villains that superman has so well, no no i mean it makes like sense clark, that they focus like, on no i mean young like clark growing up like his childhood not not oh, him being a baby, his, like, like his childhood part. Mm. Like him being a teenager and watching his dad die. Yeah. For some reason. But, so, I don't know. Like, mm. that movie had a lot of wasted time in it, I think. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> let's get past um, Man of Steel. So good. I love, I love, I love the Paw Kent dying in Man of Steel. So, Fantastic Beasts. Oh uh, yeah, the new one, the new one's gonna film. Uh, Wait, Roland wants really? to really? Yeah. yeah. J.K. Rowling still has not finished her Money Cathedral. No, she has, she says she wants to do like twenty two. Well, of these, these ones are um, stupid fucking thing. These ones are direct screenplays. They're not written based on yeah. books. But apparently, there's a second. There. I thought Fantastic begun... Beasts and Where to Find Them was yeah. a side story. No, no, well, no uh, okay, in uh, okay in. Harry Potter canon. There is there a was textbook, a book called, right? Yes, yeah, okay. and then this is and the movie about the guy who released. writes the textbook. Yeah. So actually, oh, it's oh. based on no, like it's not based on a book. It is a direct screen. I didn't actually see Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. It's okay. Oh. Well, here's the thing. I don't think that Rowling is super good with like screenplays because she gets sidetracked really easily. There is like. The biggest problem that, with that movie that is like the in lack a book. Of... Well, yeah, yeah, and it works in a book. Oh, not only does she get sidetracked, but like she doesn't like she focuses on like certain things that shouldn't be focused on. Like one of the things she could have focused on with this was like the period, the fact that it was like in right after World War One, during the Depression. She could have, they like, should, yeah, they should have the built way, more of the lore of of what yeah. America wizarding society was like. But, but I feel like they just kind they of focused on like this. Witches are evil. We're 1920s. Remember back in the like we're the 1920s, but witch hunters now. Remember the 1820s? Well, we're witch hunters in the 1920s. We're, and it's like, what? What the fuck? That is this actually shit? sounds like a really fun idea. No, um, it's not. Hey, no, 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 no. no, no. Yeah, it's just, I don't think it's... I, the, the idea that it kind of gave me, okay. like the the thought that it gave me. Again, I didn't see this movie because I don't see very many movies, but. Yeah. But what you said specifically, it it sounds like it might be fun to cover specifically the town of Salem in the Harry Potter universe. Oh, it takes place in New York, by the way. Yeah, but uh, the town of Salem would be pretty Salem. interesting, right? Yeah, because, yeah, yeah. That yeah. Because obviously the witch hunts were just fucking. Well, what if it was? I mean, what if even in Harry Potter, the town of Salem was just random thing I had nothing to yeah. do with which that would also be yeah. really funny yeah like there yeah. were no magic users in the town of salem and as far as they were concerned magic wasn't real right. but yeah but it is but, actually real everywhere else yeah but the, and but the problem is it's like she she had all this stuff she could have focused on like the best scene in that movie was the scene where they go to like this fucking cd's 1920s bar that like is serving illegal fucking alcohol and they talk to uh um like ron magic perlman alcohol. as like a yeah, magic alcohol. They talk to Ron Perlman as like a fucking gnome, and it's and it's and it's great. You get to see the under. Is it actually <laughs> Ron Perlman? Uh, oh, yeah, it's Ron Perlman. Yeah, voicing him. Yeah, um, they uh, it's like this really great scene. Lots of seedy stuff, and then it's just like they go back to like this dark wizard and this fucking like witch hunt coven, all of which has like. 0.3% to do with the main characters because there's this fight at the end that they have. And well, I feel like I feel like oh. the movie failed on a couple different levels. Like it would have been cool if they focused more on the principal who was uh like he he was um notable as being a guy Some that sort of evil yeah, fought wizard. with Dumbledore when Dumbledore was yeah, and in, well, in I mean, the, I don't think that he should have been Harry in the Potter movie book. at all. It's it, he, he he just sort of like took up a bunch of space that didn't need to be taken up, and well, it was I like there was like, like this. He, well, that, that's what I'm saying though. Like, it would have been fine if that's what their principal focus was. It wasn't. Yeah. It, it was yeah. this side thing that ended up being the climax of the movie, which was yeah. Um, yeah. they also had like this this stuff with 
I I don't even know what they what what they called it, but they, this kid turned into something evil that had to do with yeah. not using magic or something. And it just seemed yeah. like it seemed like this had a lot of cool elements. It had like a really great setting that was really interesting. A, a period they setting. Realize. They had this um maybe interesting to the lore side of it, like character that they they yeah. didn't capitalize on. It was just yeah. like it was okay because it was just like a basic plot that had kind of went weird places. But like I I feel like they really yeah. <laughs> missed an opportunity okay, yes. to make that movie interesting. Um this this follow up maybe it'll make it'll make the first one better, but I I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I mean, it wasn't it like... wasn't a bad movie, but I think that it wasted a lot of potential that it could have had. Yeah, it, it didn't even like it, you, you said like it had like a, a like a basic plot followed, which it had like multiple plots branching out in a bunch of places that it didn't need to fucking go. If it would have just followed uh, Eddie Redmayne going on fucking crazy adventures and trying to fantastic feasts and where to find them, like if they focused on that and also like maybe some of the 1920 stuff, like uh, uh, in the Wizarding World, they talked about like how America views Muggles as very dis distant or nomads. It's what they fucking call them. No manages. You know, Madge's fucking, um, and no they're man. like, you know, it's like, oh, fucking muggles, you guys marry them in Britpong land? That's fucking really, really weird. We don't like them. And if they would have focused on, like, that and been like, well, you know, maybe that you're just not looking at uh, muggles the same way that you're not looking at my fantastic beasts and where to find them. And I'm going to use these to show you that now on DVD and Blu-ray. Yeah, now out on DVD and Blu-ray, I can show you that muggles aren't that bad using this uh, muggle that I got off the street that's actually part of the movie. I can use him Hi, to show you that muggles me. aren't that bad. By the way, that character's returning. Oh, good. Uh, fuck. And it's, and it just, like, and it's he, just sort of... Honestly, with, like, though, he was one of the best parts of that movie. Oh, yeah! So. Yeah, the whole, the whole, like, Eddie Redmayne and, like, the, uh, the Ministry of Magic Lady and that guy... And, like, the girl and stuff, all of those guys were fucking great. They were, like, the best part of the movie. It just constantly pushed them to the side for, like, this fucking witch hunt bullshit. And this just wizard asshole who fucking has so, nothing to do with what these guys are doing. Do you it's, think the well, intention... Doing? Do you think the intention of that movie was to open a lot of threads that they could talk about in following scenes? Or... The like, of that movie or was it just money. her doing random stuff? <laughs> like... Mm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I yeah, it likely isn't. Um, likely isn't what? What? Yeah, uh, sorry. It it likely isn't just her doing random stuff. J.K. Rowling has like, a lot of people will make the joke like, oh, ho, J.K. Rowling is like some some fan comes up with a thing in Harry Potter that they found. It's like, oh yeah, ha ha, I, I'm me, J.K. Rowling, ha, ha, I totally planned that. No, like a lot of shit she obviously did plan, like. Yeah. Like, people always point to that thing that Snape, like, the first question Snape asks in Potions class, which basically is, like, Potions language oh, I, yeah, I'm I in love I with Lily Potter. Like, that, that I, is... I don't think that that was planned at all. It, it had to have been. It's so, it's so, it's so dead on with, like, what Snape's character is and all Snape's character is. Like, I'm not saying... Well, here's like, the thing... I'm not, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, the thing about that is I'm not convinced that she had planned that far in advance. Why? I, uh, well, I mean, I, I think that a lot of, like, the stuff that came after, right, um, a lot of the stuff that came after and a lot of stuff that came, like, into play, like, really big during the last couple of books was stuff that she had sort of, like, um, not exactly built up. Like, I believe that she thought that, like, Snape, this guy isn't actually the bad guy. Well, I believe not, that that was something that was going to Let's not divert too much into Harry Potter or whatever. I, I think that overall she is a good writer. Yeah, my point and is I, I think that she would... I think that without no, knowing that there was going to be a Fantastic Beasts 2, she's no it Stephanie seems like Mayer. a bunch of random bullshit. But oh uh no well she did she is planning to do like 27 or something fucking Fantastic Beasts. Yeah. Um yeah. Um, the second one is supposed to focus on young Dumbledore and Griswold. So. Hmm. Interesting. Because this one, the principal villain was Griswold, but they only touched on him, like, kind of at the end and alluded to him at parts of the Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I... 
I, I feel they, they, they shouldn't have had him in that movie. It just sort of... And, and, and if the next one's going to focus on, like, young Dumbledore and Griswold, then, I mean, great. Good. That, that, that's where it should be. Yeah, that's maybe, where this well, man should be. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like, yeah, I don't know. I guess we'll see. We'll wait and see. Uh, the first one wasn't a bad movie, so this one... I mean, it'll probably be at least as good. I wouldn't yeah. expect it to get worse. I mm-hmm. I don't trust like that. We'll I see. don't trust anything like that. Um, let's move on mm-hmm, okay. to. Oh yeah, the Tolkien estate. We don't got much to talk about that because we don't know much. Uh, they settled eighty thousand dollars. That's about all we know. Uh, Tolkien, million. what was the lawsuit yeah, about? Uh, okay. Uh, don't just say the Hobbit. Like yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> well, Basically, all right. Let me let me explain. So, um, the Tolkien estates. Uh, has like generally a Tolkien estate basically, basically meaning Christopher Tolkien specifically. Um, really didn't like the movies and didn't want Warner Brothers to make the. No, other that's movies. not what it was about. What what it was about was um, um there was a really basically. old deal that Tolkien, yeah. Tolkien's estate made with uh Warner Brothers about um, like like licensing merchandise. Yeah. But Tolkien's estate was claiming that that did not extend into movies and video games, and WB thought they that it did. Um, yeah, right. Whether or not, like it is, is anyone's guess because um, we know very little about it. We we know that there were like character witnesses and stuff that were going to be brought in to talk about the intention of the deal, but. In terms of like whatever direct writings, we don't really know that much about it, and now it's settled, so we never will. Mm-hmm, um, yeah. But ultimately, the t- the um, WB gave uh, Tolkien's estate eighty million dollars, um, so that they dropped the lawsuit, saying that there's not a problem with being made. Um, so this kind of clears up any problems that they might have with her video games and movies based on the property, but, uh, it, they did say that the resolution was amiable so that there, there seemed to be on good terms fault coming out of this. So it, it kind of just sounds like maybe the token estate wanted her money because they believe that they didn't actually sell the rights for the movie. And that part is in rather than is debatable. Yeah, like just merchants. So, yeah. Uh but yeah, they settled it, so now it's done and yeah. they don't have to worry about it anymore. And apparently yeah. this has been going on for what like ten years? Five, ten years? Five, I, th- I think it was like at the beginning of the filming of the Hobbit, so like yeah, five years. Uh, yeah, like so when suddenly Del Toro that. was working on them, yeah. Um hmm. But that's been settled, so now. Yeah. Well, that's Basically, good. yeah. There's not much to talk about there, uh, just because we don't. We know just much. really don't know. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Um. So I'd like to point out that we haven't gotten into game news at all. We are probably going to go a little late. That's okay. Which um, is fine. Yeah. I'm yeah. just saying that we. we well, we got half an hour. Oh right, because we don't count 20. the break. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. counting the break. Yeah, okay. Got about half an hour left. Who wants to start on gaming news? Right. Oh, um, so yeah, why don't you talk about the um, Crash Bandicoot thing? Start all right. That. Okay, so uh, this isn't this isn't so much news as it is like drama, which is always fun to get into. Um, uh, so a long story short, and you a guys kerfuffle. might have heard about this. Um, yeah, kerfuffle. That's that's the best way to fucking describe it. So, um, there was this article written by Games Radar that uh, has drummed up a lot of controversy. It was a review for the new Crash Bandicoot game. Basically, uh, oh, well, where's the quote here? Um, here it is. Uh, from the article, I'm reading directly from it. Uh, but then there is death. There's just no escaping it. There might be brand new death animations that keep you entertained, but there's no avoiding the controls that just mean Crash Bandicoot has become Dark Souls. It's a horrible shame. So, Q 
can you guys take a guess as to why that would have made people mad? People First like to off, compare everything to Dark Souls. <laughs> well, yes, on. of course. First off, I am in love with the Dark Souls series, so I can point oh. out the one thing that made me upset. Okay, go ahead. What he was saying in that sentence is that Crash Bandicoot has shitty controls. And that and then he compares it to Dark Souls, which means that he is saying Dark Souls is only hard because it has shitty controls. But that is like the defining point of Dark Souls is the tight control scheme. Well, he's saying that <laughs> yeah. you die a lot, is what he's saying. Well, no, no, right. actually, uh, no, no, that's the thing. Um, in fact, his things is, uh, uh, it, it, the, uh, final thing with the 3.5 is, it's gorgeous, a clear label of love, but the controls might drive you, er, insane. So, yeah, he straight up is saying that the controls are bad. Well, yeah, but I mean, in that quote so about saying his, is, but that quote wow! about the comparison. Was, I didn't even press that button! Okay, shut up. <laughs> go on. No, no, go ahead. I say. think, I think all that comparison was was just straight that you die a lot. But, like, a lot of that game is mastering controls. And yeah, you die a lot, but, like, it, well, games in the 90s, it, you died a lot. It's a it's a platformer game. Like, you have to learn how to use the controls in a platformer game. That's, like, basically the one thing you do in a platformer, is learn oh, how to use the controls. And also, um, like, okay, well, uh, it, the, the direct quote is, but there's no avoiding that the controls just mean that Crash Bandicoot has become Dark Souls. Uh. Right. But yeah, he's straight up talking about the controls. Um, the thing is, of course, the reason that this has drummed up so much controversy is like, especially if you look at the uh, the fucking comments, it's, uh, are you seriously complaining about the difficulty of a game that I beat when I was fucking seven? This is a, rev this is a review of the Dark Souls. Yeah, this is review is the Dark Souls of cringeworthy reviews. You know, it's, this man was not very good at the game, so he gave it a much lower score than you would have if he had been good at the game. Well... In... That is the exact same thing that happened with Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze a couple of years ago. Yeah. Like, word for word. Um, I, I think thing. the thing is, like... It's... That game is very hard. But being hard is not necessarily a bad thing. As long yeah. as it doesn't spike in difficulty randomly... Or abruptly, that's fine. If it's consistently hard to that same level, then that's fine. Like, yeah. and and I think it is a little bit unreasonable to remove. Well, I, I mean, this kind of goes back into the like number score bullshit that kind of just exists yeah, number with number reviews. Yeah. But, um, yeah, like. Coming to the conclusion of a number that it's may or may not be based yeah. on on the difficulty, like it's like number reviews are really arbitrary, and it's hard to say what what caused that number score. It seems like if it was um, just the difficulty, then that's kind of disingenuous to what the game is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Not only that, but this man uh, does admit to um, switching constantly between the analog and the D-pad rather than you know, getting good at one of them. <laughs> and yeah, and it definitely like it lists like the pros and cons. Like pros, every single level is beautiful. This is a total love letter to the series. Thankfully, the save system has been upgraded. And cons: neither analog or D-pad controls feel precise enough, and that imprecision will kill you repeatedly. I. Which could I, read as he's bad is, at the game. Okay, well, that that brings up an interesting point. Yeah. Wait, okay, this is a story. This is a personal anecdote from when I was a child. Okay. When I was a child, I owned a PlayStation One, and I spent so much time playing on my PlayStation One. For Christmas, the year it came out, my dad bought me a PlayStation Two with Jack and Daxter, which, if you remember. The original Jack and Daxter game did not allow you to use the D-pad for anything at all. There was no the D-pad did literally nothing in the game. It didn't control the menus, it didn't it didn't control anything. And when I was a child, that frustrated me so much because I played with a, a D-pad for five years, and then suddenly 
I couldn't use it no matter what I did. And I had to learn to use an analog stick. But now I can't imagine not using an analog stick and having a game that required the D-pad. Like, well, I think so you, it's like if you're going to try both of those controls you might as well just stick with the analog stick if you play modern games more yeah well i think that the issue with crash bandicoot is probably is imprecise like i remember playing crash bandicoot and a lot of the difficulty was the control because they weren't nice but like to say that that's entirely the reason why it's hard i i don't know like, no, yeah. yeah, the level design yeah. is hard. Games yeah. are meant to be challenging, in and my opinion. Well, and, and they Some especially games... were way more challenging back then. Yeah. yeah, and this is a remake of that game. And that's 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 why I love gaming as a genre, because it, uh, it, it there there is a level of skill required to, you know, really get all that you can out of gaming. It's it's a, it's it's this barrier, you know? Mm-hmm. And I love that. I love there's a barrier. But that's because I'm a horrible elitist, you see. But it also feels but that also makes games feel more rewarding when you do complete them. Yeah, that too. Well, depending on the person. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, yeah. whether or not I mean whether or not it it's always more depends rewarding on the person, depends but... on you. Yeah. Um, it always depends on the person, but like that's something that you. Well, yeah, but I'm, what I'm saying is, like, it's not intrinsic that the more challenging it is, the more that it feels good. That's not necessarily true for everyone. Mm-hmm. All I'm saying. Um, but Crash Bandicoot is number one on the UK sales charts, and mm-hmm. because the UK actually publishes those numbers and the United States doesn't, have to kind of extrapolate that out a little bit suggesting that crash bandicoot is probably um one or two in the united states as well. yeah i um, mean i bet likely so it sold it sold very well uh yeah that's cool yeah um it's Great. good to see that that game is doing well because i like to uh have another crash bandicoot a modern one yeah um see how that goes yeah yeah yeah. It was just controversy because uh, there was another one of those a gaming journalist is not good at video games, so give slightly worse review to a video I game. I don't think that a game that, that somebody who reviews video games for a living has to be a god at playing video games. I don't like, believe they should be a god, but well, here's but the thing. They should not use their the subjective experience of them objectively being bad to dock re- dock their review like if they if they recognize that the game is difficult and they aren't good enough to beat it they shouldn't dock points off of it they should look at what they did experience from the game and see how good it is from a subjective standpoint obviously well, there's the no time, such thing as an objective review but at the same time yeah. the argument can be made that um game is needlessly frustrating because of a bad control. You um, could say that. You could skate. Well, yeah, that. and that's um, that's kind of... Well, I mean, he phrased it in a really dumb way. But I feel like that's ultimately what he was getting at. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I don't know. And controls... Like... I don't know... I haven't played the new Crash Bandicoot, so I couldn't tell you what I thought about the control. But... Bad controls are one of the things that like really influences how good a game is. So, and that was one of the true. things that uh, made ukulele but, like well, like a lot of the uh, stuff we're talking about, like the fact that it's like sort of an old game. Uh, that that's one of the biggest complaints people had it, had with ukulele. And I feel yeah. like the difference is Crash Bandicoot was is legitimately an old game and it's just getting like a remaster, basically, whereas New Ukulele is like legitimately a new game. Okay. Well. If we're about done with Trash Bandicoot, I have one final wow, thought on it. Trash Bandicoot. Up. If we're about done with Trash Bandicoot, my I least said, favorite I game. I said Crash Bandicoot. You, you, said, said, tra- you said Trash you said, Bandicoot. It sounded like you said Trash Bandicoot. I really. wish that game was bad so we could make that joke. Yeah, but no, that Crash is great. I love Crash Boy, Bandicoot. Fucking Trash Bandicoot. The point Bandicoot. is... It has about an 80 on Metacritic if you want to yeah. talk about scores. If you want to go... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was mostly um, just this one reviewer. Yeah. Um, 
So it, that said about Crash Bandicoot, okay. I really do believe that that particular reviewer was just bad and blaming the control scheme, as some people do. Because I literally just watched a speedrun of Crash Bandicoot, and speedruns require very precise controlling. Which will segue into the next small little topic here. I want to shout out to SGDQ going on right now. Yeah. Um, they are speedrunning video games for Doctors Without Borders. I believe it is going all week. I never get too much of a chance to watch games done quick because I'm always working through them. But um, if you're into that kind of thing, it's it's really fun. And they don't do many of those stupid, like, Zelda glitch speedruns where you complete Ocarina of Time in, like, two minutes. Like, yes, a lot of speedruns require exploiting game mechanics, but a lot of them do most of the games done quick don't do glitch speedruns because they know they're boring to watch. And their point is to get people watching so that they donate to charity. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And of course, that's only if you've been living under a rock. I'm pretty sure most people who are watching YouTube or Twitch will know about games done quick already. Well, I heard about it. I didn't know. Yeah, it is right now. Uh, Summer is, Games but... Done Quick is running right now at uh, right. twitch.tv slash games done quick. Also, if you buy Humble Monthly through them, uh, your first your first Humble Monthly subscription charge will go 100% to Doctors Without Borders, so that's pretty cool. I just want to say real quick that we're not sponsored by either of these people. No, we're not. I just think, <laughs> I don't think, I don't that think that, that... It did sound like a little bit like an advertisement, but yeah. It, it does sound a little bit now. like, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a charity event. I don't think yeah. they would be, they would sponsor anybody, but yeah, like GDQ is, is always a really fun event and I, I Well, yeah, Humble I still does advertise. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I just, I recommend tuning in, like, even if you're not interested in speedrunning, just to kind of see, like, how fucking good some of these people can be at your favorite games. Like, they always do a Super Metroid speedrun, and I love Super Metroid, but I can't even, like, imagine pressing buttons as fast as these people do. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it is kind of crazy. Get out of here, Rex. <laughs> um, yeah. so, let's move on to a kind of an interesting uh, Netflix, or uh, a couple of anime. Um, Bandai Namco is making uh, a couple of Netflix original animes into uh, games. Oh, go on. That's interesting. I know that they're making a uh, Netflix uh, fucking Castlevania show. The two, yeah, they are. Uh, but yeah. the two games that they're making, that Bandai Namco is making, is um, House of Cards. Bojack Horton. <laughs> Those are not anime. Uh, Seven Deadly oh, Sins not. and Little Witch Academia. Oh, okay. I've never even heard anything positive or negative about Seven Deadly Sins, so if I haven't heard anything even bad about it, I have to assume it's not very good. It's um, mediocre. Yeah. It's not exactly. bad, but it's not great. <laughs> Little Witch Academia... I've literally never heard a bad thing about it, but I've heard nothing but good things. That's kind of exciting, and usually anime games... I haven't watched like, that like, one, but it sounds kind of like a meme. Yeah, wow. maybe. I don't, um, know. I don't know. I I've, uh, I, I, I do remember watching, like, the original, the, the pilot for it, like, years the ago. The OVA? Which, uh, uh, what? The OVA. Yeah, the OVA. When, when it's an anime, a pilot is called an OVA. OVA, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I did watch the OVA like years ago, um, and I thought like the animation was absolutely beautiful. I loved looking at it, and uh, apparently the show is just more of the same, and I'm really excited for that. And yeah, it's on Netflix now, so I can just watch it. I need to do that. Um, so the first one, the one based on Seven Deadly Sin is a action adventure based game which is like the least descriptive possible genre ever made it's well, a video game well actually that's more <laughs> that's more descriptive than uh, it could be but uh and then the other one is it doesn't say but it's going to have an original storyline separate from that see what excites me is 
most of the time, if, if you like name a game based off of, a, of an anime, it's usually a... God, okay, this, this is where the genre gets really confusing. I don't know what to call it. Uh, it's, it's usually like a crazy style game, like Devil May Cry or Metal Gear Rising or Bayonetta. Yeah, yeah spectacle. spectacle Fighter, there you go. Yeah, usually anime-based games are tend to be Spectacle Fighters, which is one of my favorite genre of video games, Well, but period. you have to keep in mind that it is Bandai Namco, so it might be a Warriors game. Yeah. A, a hack oh, and slash yeah. style a game. Oh, yeah, Musou or, yeah, Dynasty um, Warriors, yeah. That being said, I think Bandai Namco might have some Spectacle Fighters, but I don't, it's I think definitely not do. what they're known. Uh, and then... But, what, but, like, Pirate Warriors of the One Piece game made by Bandai Namco? Yeah, I, I didn't yeah. I expect it to be I would like cons- that. I would consider Musou games to be somewhat of Spectacle Some Fighters. Of spectacle. No, they're, they're, they're more like, like hack and slash similar. I, I don't know. They, they fall under kind of, like, a similar category, where it's, like, a very skill-based combo system of, like, that, that Musou kind of games? Deal. Yeah. They, they skill based. Okay. <laughs> it, well, I mean, they they look really pretty, and they have like a and a lot of Musou games incorporate like tough boss fights that require you to. Okay, let's like move actually on. This use is not. Okay. <laughs> mm. uh, you say so. <laughs> yeah, because I don't know. Um, who did the uh, who did the Attack on Titan game? I don't no. know. I don't. I haven't I don't played know, it. Top of my head either. I also don't know if it was any good. I heard it was pretty good. Huh. Uh, let me just. I would not be surprised. If that one was also banned. Oh, that one's uh, Koei Tecmo. Oh, they also do make a lot of fighting games, like like regular ass fighters. Like, they make yeah. the JoJo fighting games, they make the One Piece fighting games, the Naruto Shippuden fighting games, they make Dragon Ball Z Budokai. Um, so usually those anime games that they make, I guess, tend to be fighting games, not like... Oh, that's, oh right, it's like Koei Tecmo. Fighting. I was they mixing also up Koei Tecmo uh, and Pokemon Tournament. Um, that being said, it's supposed to be an action adventure, so I couldn't imagine it being a fighting game. Yeah, yeah. At least that's what Seven Deadly Sins... Yeah, at least it's a deadly sins one. I feel um, like Little Witch Academia would make more sense for either I've, a fighting game or a spectacle fighter. I've seen um uh like images from the Little Witch Academia game, uh like screenshots and stuff, and like visually it looks great. It looks just like the show. Um, I'm makes sense. yeah. I mean, is it cel shaded or is it two D? I it looks cel shaded. It's cel shaded. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, do you want to move on? Sure. Okay, Watch Dogs 2 is adding a co-op mode. Hmm. Uh, a four-player co-op mode to the free roam. Uh, that's going to be in a free patch. Initially, they announced it was going to be a DLC, but they changed their minds because they're soft, and now it's going to be free, I guess. All right. Probably um, because the concurrence, I don't, I couldn't imagine being great on Watch Dogs anymore. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot of people thought the first one was bad after it came. They were hyped for it, but after the first one came out, they thought it was bad. A lot of people didn't even try the second one second, because of the first the one. The first one was bad, <laughs> according to me. And I, to I, me too. I played the second game and I liked it a lot. I didn't even fucking touch that it shit. Was, because... The second one was worth playing. Um, it was way here's, better. Here's the interesting part. All of the shit that they showed for Watchdog One, Watchdogs One was hype as shit. Like it was like fucking technology out the wazoo. They fucking the they hyped like... up so much good shit in it, and then the game turned out really bad. And then like I didn't even touch the second one because the first one was bad. But then like anytime they advertised the second one, they just really dropped the ball on advertisement. They were like. Here's this guy. He's Bane from Payday 2. Wow! And that was like the whole advertising campaign or something. And it's like, what the fuck is... This doesn't... First off, this doesn't look interesting. And you're advertising the game with literal memes. 
why would anybody want to play this? But I guess if the game turned out good... No, the game was good. And actually, the story the was good, too, It kind of, like, flip-flops what happened. Like, um, really good advertising on Watch Dogs 1 and bad game. Really bad advertising on Watch Dogs I, I wouldn't say the game. advertising was that bad on Watch Dogs. It's, it's and it like, still did reasonably well. Uh, um, the thing is, like, it looked like technology. Like, Watch Dogs One looked like technology, but it ended up being like anti-technology, well, where it was like kind of just glitchy. The, the model, the the message in the first one was very mixed. It like they didn't really. I don't know. It like the main character was written awful, and oh yeah, that's oh, yeah. Like, the character was awful. The, the, like, main goal of the characters was, like, strange. Uh, I don't know. Like, the... and, uh, man, that game made me motion Like, I, not many games make me motion sick, but uh, all of that, ca the, like, head bobbing in that game made me motion sick all the time. Which is weird, because it's a third-person game. Yeah. Um, Watch Dogs 2, though, actually was a lot more focused the characters were all more interesting, and even the ones that look cringy from a distance, like the uh, the guy with the mask. face mask that had emojis on on his face, that guy was actually a lot of fun. <laughs> he was actually really like a really cool character. That's um, what I was talking about with the advertisement. Not necessarily the advertisement looked explicitly like a bad game, but like like you were saying with the. Well, I, I wouldn't it, it say. Was, I mean, I, I would say that you. Like, I hate using the word cringy. I would say that your it. your perspective yeah. on it was probably a little bit skewed because, um, of where you were hearing about it. Whereas I I watched like the TV commercial, so I saw it on TV, and uh, on TV they didn't focus that heavily on that character. Hmm. Um, he was in the commercial certainly, but, um. Yeah, but at at a distance, he looks kind of like. Uh, I mean, I don't want to say cringy again, but like he looked like he was uh, kind of a joke character, but he actually was a really he is a really interesting character. Um, hmm. He's more complex than being like. But in fact, all of the characters he's more are more complex than. that you would see that you would think seeing them on the bubble. Um, and then the game. The best thing about Watch Dogs 2 is it took all of the complaints from the first Watch Dogs and, and fixed them. <laughs> um, Ubisoft is actually pretty good at that. Usually yeah. Ubisoft sequels do tend to be better than the first game, which is not something that all game studios can accomplish. So I'm really disappointed that a lot of people wrote off Watch Dogs 2 out of hand because Watch Dogs 2 is way better in, in basically all respects. Um, the, the the thing is, Watch Dogs One like was such a huge letdown. It basically invented the word bull shots, like shots, and, uh, which are are bullshit screenshots that you show at E three that are completely different than the game. Yeah, like, the was, game. I mean, yeah, they they did kind of they they were the height of the trend of like this is completely unrepresent uh unrepresentative footage, but. Yeah. That being said, even even if you take that away from Watch Dogs One, it didn't make Watch Dogs One a better game, like, or or yeah. it, it didn't make it a good game. Like, if they still downgraded the visuals and it turned out to still be a good game with slightly worse visuals, that would have been one yeah. thing. Right. But they like, released a, they, a, uh... they did downgraded it and released a kind of poor game. Yeah, um, remember when people well, complained that, about like The Witcher like that? They said like they had downloaded the way I don't even know. If they that's did the they all. they said they well, did the same. Well, see sure. that's, that's, yeah. that's that one the was interesting. a little bit. That and one and yeah, The Witcher was available. really really good, so people well, don't give a fuck. Yeah, and The Witcher three um, like even yeah. I mean the, the argument that they downgraded the graphics is kind of tenuous because it is not nearly as significant a leap between Watch Dogs as it was first shown and watchdogs as it came so yeah it's well, a like, lot harder okay. to judge like here here's the thing though like it was it wasn't necessarily the downgrade itself it was the way they presented it it was like like if you remember the first time they showed watchdogs on e3 screen like the main character like walks in through this door 
and there are these like flaps and he put like the main character lifts up his hands and pushes these flaps out of the way and behind him and they kind of like keep swinging back and forth yeah and he comes he comes in from from this rainy thing and you can see each individual droplet of rain reflecting off his leather jacket and but 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 like just showing that wouldn't have been a big thing. No, but it the was thing like is. they he did that and everybody in the audience was like, Whoa! And the guy on stage was like, Yeah, that's how watchdogs is. No. Well well the thing is, is you're, they, you're like, exaggerating a lot. Like... And actually that scene is still in there and it all that stuff still happens, it just doesn't look as good. It yeah, is literally but... just visual. Like it, yeah. it's not has yeah, to do with physics. Yeah, it's a huge visual downgrade. But well, no, the first time that's not how they advertised it. Was that's the thing? How they advertised? Yeah, it's like like they started it out as a cut I mean, scene. Not, not like overall advertising, yeah. but it, the the first E three trailer. Yeah, I feel like I mean, people got I, really I, burned on that. Yeah, and then the game also turned out to be bad. Yeah, well, yeah, like, and also it was like the the thing is it like looked really like a cut scene, happened. and then the HUD popped up, and it's like, but yeah, I this is actually I gameplay. wouldn't equate all of their advertising to that one E three trailer though. No, well, that was not. the thing that uh, definitely gained the most hype for it. That was what started it. Yeah, so and anyway, about it, well, that was their announcement there, trailer. and it exists. That's yeah, yeah. Now, now that Thel brings that up, like, yeah, it, it started out looking like a cutscene, and then a HUD popped up, and the words "actual gameplay in engine foot" or whatever. Actually, said. well, I don't think they did that. I think it was just like it, it just like was showing Rated gameplay. It was, it, was, it was just like this big reveal of how beautiful the game was. Like that was how yeah. it popped up on E3, and that was the big but advertising. I don't think that, that was. Then. That said, I don't think that was the big. Pr- problem oh, no. with Watch Dogs. Not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if the game had still been good, it would have been like, wow, yeah, this game got yeah. downgraded like fuck, but at least the game's good. But it it's like people got burned on it because they launched up the game and were like, wow, this visually looks really shitty. And then they played the game anyway because they bought it based on the hype. Well, and either way, we're getting way bad. off of the point of why I was talking about Watch Dogs 2 and that they're adding... That's true. They're adding yeah. four-player party co-op, so... Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I've never yeah. been interested in Watch Dogs 2 because of Watch Dogs 1, but multiplayer always makes me interested in games, especially multi like more than two-man multiplayer. And mm-hmm. I mean co-op multiplayer especially. I, I'm always looking for good co-op games because competitive games stress me out and sometimes i don't want to play a competitive games but i do want to play a game with my friends so i'm well, always think, looking for i think it's coming at a good games. time because there hasn't been a new saints row in a long time and <laughs> agents true. of mayhem yeah. specifically does not have co-op in it yeah agents and mayhem being the same game in the also with that gta yeah, 5 series. controversy that got it yeah, got cleared yeah, up yeah. it got cleared up sort but of. it is well, it was it still was there yeah time. yeah so yeah, but, but even yeah, then, GTA Online is not the same thing. Oh yeah, yeah, it yeah, just yeah. isn't. So yeah, yeah. but it's, um, it's very different. But but still. But yeah, I really wish people would give games. give Watch Dogs Two more of a chance because it was a lot better than the first one. Uh, and um, the the way the way that you put this here, um, Watch Dogs, uh, the way that you sort of wrote it down is uh, Watch Dogs Two is adding a four player party mode. Um, if Watch Dogs Two releases a Mario Party like game, I'll play it. <laughs> I, I'm excited for Watch Dogs Mario Party, man. Fuck it. Right. Ubisoft, Step make it happen. It's like one one player has to run around and chuck grenades at people. The other three players have to hack him and make him blow himself <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mm. That's fucking weird. Every once in a while you run a, around a square that the evil corporation Ah, oh, it's me, the evil corporation. Now you have to give me all your fucking money. Yeah. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> anyway. Oh no. Well, I think even from a thematic standpoint, Watch Dogs 2 was better about how they handled like the idea of what they were even doing. Because it seemed like it seemed like the character in the first Watch Dogs was a hypocrite. Whereas in the second one, they use technology and stuff, but they have kind of like that, uh, like pseudo anonymous, um, perspective of like information should be information should, like, I I don't know, like you should know about what you're, who's surveilling you and stuff. So, 
I, I don't know. Just from even from a thematic standpoint, it was just better, more cohesive of a. Um, Watch Dogs Two is definitely worth looking for, especially if it's on sale. It's probably on sale. It might still be like thirty five. Either way, right. Um, the last thing that I want to talk about is uh review bombing because it came out recently that um. Chinese players have started uh, review bombing um, games that don't localize proper properly. Most notably, uh, Nier Automata came out with, um, or Square Enix brought Nier Automata to the Chinese market without actually translating anything. <laughs> um, oh, well, Square Enix is how? Yeah. So. I mean, I that would be like somebody putting a Japanese game on an English marketplace and not translating, translating it. Translating it to oh, chess. Wait. <laughs> well, does that happen that often? Well, I mean, there's some stuff on Steam, but... Yeah. Or well, a Korean game coming out completely, or a Russian game coming out to an English market completely untrans. Oh, all that happens. But that said, if review bombing helps... I don't know. Yeah. I mean, should, I do, uh, I do. Ben? Uh, I do kind of want to take this time to shit talk the Chinese, but honestly, if they're releasing a game in China, they should probably fucking translate. Like, right? Yeah, they, that's something that they should do. Not the Chinese, but the country of China. The country no. of China and the people being uh, we're, we're talking about like individual consumers. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah, we, I, 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 I do want to talk about the people, like, just shit talk to people, review bombing, like, oh, what fucking assholes, uh, they didn't even play the game, uh, but, like, if you don't fucking translate a game. They also double like, the price of it in China. Oh, well. Okay. If you don't translate a game and then you, like, like, it's, it's different if it's a global release, but if you intentionally bring it to a specific market without translating it. Well, it's and like, it's yeah. one thing to, to release it uh kind of on steam with only one language support like there are a couple games that are only in russian a couple games that are only in japanese on i think that's oh, yeah. kind of different having english japanese yeah. russian korean well, uh, no i mean well french yeah, i don't know yeah. polish swedish but no chinese and then selling yeah. it in china yeah yeah I mean, yeah, they probably did double the price well, in China. Well, they didn't China, even have language support, so you couldn't even, like... You couldn't even machine translate it. <laughs> so, I don't know. That that seems, like, really dumb. But yeah. uh, I wanted to sort of segue into the uh, idea of review bombing in general. Okay. Right. Um, what are your guys' thoughts about using that avenue to kind of... <laughs> protest game company because it's been happening I, a lot lately yeah uh, i actually don't know notably um, with my, grand theft auto 5 yeah yeah notably with grand theft auto um i i, I mean it definitely sends the uh, game company's message at the very least like it it does yeah. send i don't know if it sends a good message per se but it does send a message to yeah. the game company directly and it is a million times more effective than a fucking petition yeah, right. Petitions like, don't really do always, anything. Whereas you that... always see stupid fucking petitions on change.org, like, please let well, Animal even... Crossings be gay. And it's like Nintendo is never gonna look at that ever, ever. Even if um, <laughs> even if there is a petition that goes with it, I think that review bombing on the Steam page is probably more effective because it is yeah. directly influencing the storefront. And actually, there's lots of data to suggest that um, people really do use that that Steam um, review Reviews. score. Oh, straight like, up. Like, a, I um... No, I mean, I do, for sure. Well, yeah, I, I do even, even outside I of does. anecdotally, even outside yeah. of anecdotally, like, um, there is some stats to back that up um, based on stuff that I've heard from Steam. So, yeah. right. um, I don't know. Like and especially in Rockstar's case, they care a lot about their critical acclaim. That's one of Rockstar's biggest things. Yeah. Um, so, I I don't know. I'm I don't hate it, but I feel like 
I don't know. I th I think it's effective, if nothing else. Yeah, um, it works. I so. don't think that. I think that there. No, that's not true. I actually don't think there are better tactics that I can think of off the top of my head. You know, head I think for, I, okay, for I a think large community to send a full message. I think know? that the context is the context helps. I think that review bombing on Steam makes more sense than bombing on Metacritic. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's more effective because it directly influences the store Yeah, page. like on Metacritic you have to go look up the Metacritic score of a game. But if you're going to the Steam store page and you see mostly negative reviews, you're like, yeah, you might, you might be like, second. I don't want to fucking buy you're it. Like, you're or, like or just about to least. click the buy button and or, it's like yeah. right there staring you in the face. Or at the very least, you look why. Like, e even if yeah. you know that Grand Theft Auto V is an acclaimed game and then you go to the page and you're like, wait, why is there negative reviews? You can at least go and look and see why people are... Yeah. And it, especially in the case of the, uh, of locking down the open four mod system. Like, I don't know. Th yeah. That seems like, like it's effective. So. Like, I, I love anecdotes, so I'm going to tell one. Um, there's this game <laughs> that the three of us have played a few times, and we, we enjoyed it. We don't keep going back to it constantly, but we enjoyed it. It's called We Need to Go Deeper. And when I, when I looked at it, I, I was just, I found it in my Steam queue, and it had mostly negative reviews now it's now it's mostly positive because they're they're actively developing it so they've yeah. fixed a lot of issues and it's it's actually overall positive um like from an overall review standpoint but when i bought it for a four pack of it for four of my friends including the three of us yeah. and another dude it We're was mostly about, negative oh, yeah. but i yeah. scrolled down and i read the reviews and most of the reviews said said something along the lines of I can't give it a positive review right now, but here are the pros and cons. So, like, you can give it negative reviews and then actually, like, type well, out your thoughts and say, hey, this is bad about it and I'm giving it a negative review now, but if they fix this, 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 and this. And I think that some well, developers at least read it. I don't even think necessarily... When, when I said you can look to see why, I wasn't necessarily saying... That is part of your normal information gathering when deciding on a purchase. I just mean when you know that something is critically acclaimed, but the the user score doesn't match with that. Yeah, it sends a message. Like the same Grand way, Theft like Auto Skyrim or Near. What? Like with Grand Theft Auto or Near. If Near has right. mostly negative reviews, then you've heard through word of mouth nothing but good things about it. You can scroll down and see. Oh, yeah. it looks like a lot of Chinese users are pissed off that they can't play the game because they don't speak English. Right. You can scroll because down. They live in China. You can or, well, I think it was a like, little bit more serious than not. Well, I don't. I don't know the extent of what it meant, but it sounded like it didn't even have support for menus. But because <laughs> I don't know what Chinese. I don't know. I the way it sounded ambiguous from the article that I read about it, but. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. You, you can just scroll down and see the Chinese reviews and think, hmm, I can't read any of this because I don't speak Chinese. <laughs> yeah. I wonder I what mean, these people are pissed off about. I mean, yeah, but... I don't know. If, if I feel like... Like, that's just a side note, kind of, but I feel like if all of the negative reviews are coming from one particular language you yeah. can kind of if you're a little bit intelligent you can assume that it's because there's not support for their language or not even necessarily that or there's something, something that you offensive don't understand to their culture. doesn't affect you yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. like um, if they blew up shanghai and man of steel <laughs> anyway we're we're running a little late here so yeah um are there any last thoughts before we check out of this episode I think I think we got. God, there was something I wanted to say, but that was like two hours ago, and I lost it. Well, there was something that I wanted to okay. say about oh. Guild Wars. This is that the uh, developers hate themselves because of the way that the community plays it. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of yeah, people was, being was... bad at video games, like. Um, yeah. Like okay, that. so. Well, that's good. Go. At, after this, um, I'm going to upload that. Um, 
do our discussion about lawbreakers. So if you're interested in that, um, be on YouTube. <laughs> Go ahead and take a little peek see there. Well, um, learn what our thoughts are. Spoiler I, alert, good. I may or may not be streaming at twitch.tv slash graveyarddalson, depending on what we do. I'll post on Twitter if we if I do end up streaming more today. I have to take care of some stuff. I can't be. We play it by ear. Yeah. I mean, I have a schedule, but I play other, like, extra streams by ear, so. Yeah. You know. Okay. So, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. Yeah, see you then. And then like, comment, and subscribe. Oh, right. I forgot. And follow on Twitch because we don't have a subscribe button quite and yet. And have a happy America Day. Happy Fourth of July. Sunglasses are all the way over there, but happy Fourth of July. Happy Fourth of and July. And happy birthday, Canada. It's a little little late, but happy birthday anyway. Yeah, you know, happy <laughs> birthday, Canada. But America's birthday is tomorrow. <laughs> Fuck yeah! Okay. Bye.